introduce themselves. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, looking forward to a good game. Yeah, let me shake your hand. Let me shake your hand. Everybody doing that. And now here's John McDade here to come out with the instructions. Captains, George is the home team in red. Missouri is in white as the visitors. The visitors will call the toss. Here's my coin. The SEC logo is heads. SEC is heads. This is tails. I'm going to flip it in the air and I'm going to let it hit the ground. What do you call? Heads. Heads he calls. Heads. And it is heads. Missouri, you've won the toss. You need to defer your option to this half. You're going to want to receive the ball this half. Yes, sir. All right, you heard that. Missouri won the toss. They call heads. It is heads. They deferred. Uh, John McDade looked right at Josh Dawson and said, you want to receive the ball, right? And so Josh just said, sure, I'll go with that. Uh, why argue with the referee right off the bat, right? So that's what they're going to do. George is going to get the ball on offense to start against a very tough Missouri defense. Scott, let's get it on! All right, Chuck, a little suggestive thinking from the referee, John McDade. Of course you want the ball if you... The other team's deferring. We'll take it and see if we can uh, make a mark on the scoreboard first and get this thing rolling, get this stadium even uh, a little more into it than they already are. These folks are ready for some more football, Z. After uh, a couple of bad weeks, uh, from our viewpoint of things, it's time to turn it around. Well, it is time to turn it around, and nobody wants it more uh, than the young men on that sideline. They've had a great week of practice. We're ready to get it going. and people still filing into the stadium right now but the fans here in force beneath the lights it doesn't get much better than watching the dogs play on saturday night well we'll get a, an early taste of this missouri defense uh number one in the sec in scoring defense they've only allowed 13 and a half points a game so far they're first against the pass they're sixth against the rush they're second in total yardage defense We'll see if the dogs can put a dent in that as well. Well, I'll tell you, it's a dogs offense that has struggled over the past couple of weeks against a couple of pretty good defenses, and now no Nick Chubb. Uh, so it's going to be a test here for our boys on the offensive side of the side of the football. But listen, we've got weapons galore, even minus Nick Chubb. Just got to get the ball to him, and let's see if we can get the chains moving tonight. So many three and outs over the first or over the last couple of games, starting with Alabama. Bled some into, into the Tennessee game. First down, a critical down tonight. Need to average about four yards a pop. Coming out in starting series just to get some momentum. Keep us from being one-dimensional. We do that, we can be in pretty good shape. Missouri will kick off with their punter, Corey Fatoni, the national punter of the week from the Ray Guy Association. It's going to go to Reggie Davis on the goal line. Davis full sprint at the 10 to the 20. He hits that seam hard on the far side at the 28-yard lines where first contact was made. And we'll see where they spark the football. But Reggie comes up hobbling. That's not good. He was in a full sprint at about three yards after the catch. And he's going to hobble to the sidelines. And the Bulldogs will have the football. First and 10 from their own 28-yard line after the tackle by Thomas Wilson, a reserve safety for the Missouri Tigers. Boy, you hope that is just a little stinger that he can shake off. He's emerging as one of our best threats on the outside catching the football. Dogs will start with three receivers on the near side. In the shotgun, Grayson Lambert with time. Throws, passes, batted up in the air and intercepted on the tip. Ian Simon catches the tip on the interception for Missouri. He's running through Bulldogs. He's slashing back to the near side at the 10, at the 5, a race for the corner, and we will cut his legs out at the one-yard line. He did not get into the end zone. We finally caught him. The pass was batted at the line of scrimmage, high in the air, and Kenneth Towns finally stopped the touchdown on the near side. And, Scott, we tried, to, we tried to go to Jeb Blazevich. Tight ends haven't caught a pass in the past two football games. They're a little combo covered from Missouri. And Grayson had to pump the football one time. He was going to go to the slot receiver, tried to come back in on a little option route to Jeb Blazevich, but it got undercut by a linebacker that Lambert never saw. Tigers have it first and goal at the Georgia 1. And Locke fumbled the snap and dropped the football. He caught it between his legs, and Georgia will pot him up and just clobber him, drive him back to the five. We'll see where they give him his forward progress. He's going to lose a yard or so on the play. Sterling Bailey getting in there first. Locke working under center, dropped the snap. He caught it down around his ankles, and then by that time it was too late. Georgia's defense had got good penetration on that Missouri line, and they drove him back to the three. Yeah, Locke fortunate that football just 
bounced right back up to him. Boy, this would be a huge momentum play if we can keep the Tigers out of the end zone. Drew Locke back into the shotgun this time. The snap is high. He's going to field it. They hand it off to Hansbro. He drives straight ahead into the line of scrimmage. And the dogs pile it up short of the goal line. Missouri with an early break. An interception on the first play on a tipped ball. That uh, Simon returned to the one. Bellamy and Floyd in there to make the stop on Hansbro, who's been battling ankle problems this season and has been inconsistent. Well, the crowd's into this thing early in the first minute and a half. George is already with its back against the wall. It's third and goal from the one for the Tigers. Lock in the shotgun. Hansbro offset to his left. Another high snap. Give it to Hansbro. We hit him in the backfield again with Gaines. Jake Gaines hit him first and stopped him dead in his tracks. And Missouri, who had it first and goal on the one, is now looking at fourth and goal from the three. Boy, Canis came through the line of scrimmage like he was shot out of a cannon, read it absolutely perfectly, split the gap that just met the Mizzou ball carrier head on, and no yards after contact there. Not when Jake Gaines gets a hold of you. And this will be Andrew Baggett coming on for Missouri to try a field goal. From the 10 and a half, basically an extra point here. 20, 21 yard field goal right in the middle of the field. There's the snap. The kick is up and it is good. That's a victory for the Georgia defense right there. I tell you, they hold them to three after first and goal on the one. I, I'll tell you, you, you never, you never want to see a, a pick go down to the one yard line, but you're right. That can be a huge confidence boost for this Georgia defense. Tigers with a three nothing lead early. Timeout in Athens. Back in a moment. Bulldog Sports Network from IMG. Tigers get three on the interception. And Athens Regional Health System sponsors Georgia football. Athens Regional for the fans. 3-0 Missouri over Georgia very early in the first quarter. Let's go down to the sidelines. Chuck Donald with a Cook's Pest Control sideline report. Chuck, down to you. Scott, we're awaiting word on Reggie Davis. He did not come back out on the kickoff team. Uh, i got to ask Eric. Eric, we have seen a number of times this year Grayson Lambert, who's at 6-5 but gets past his tip. Have you noticed anything in his throwing motion? Uh, you know, at, at times he'll drop down. He doesn't throw sidearm, but he'll go three quarters every once in a while. Uh, and even at 6'5", you know, the guys that you're playing against are awfully big as well. You still have to find lanes. Here's Fatoni's kickoff. Terry Godwin in in place of Reggie Davis on the uh, kick return team. He's going to field that ball deep in the end zone and take a knee for the touchback. And Georgia will have it first and ten on the 25. Well, the first offensive series uh, ended in a, I don't know if you can call it a series. It was one play. The pass was uh, tipped by Missouri, and then Simon picked it off his second interception of the year. It's also Grayson Lambert's second interception thrown this season. But the Dogs' defense really uh, had a stiff upper lip down there on the goal line and uh, held Missouri to a field goal after a first and goal at the one. Here's Lambert's toss out to the left flat. It is caught by Godwin. He pulls away from a tackler and fights for more yards and gets it up the Georgia sideline. Kenya Dennis was grabbing at his ankle, and Godwin was able to pull away from him up the near sideline to the 37-yard line, a pickup of 12, and a very nice individual effort by Terry Godwin to get away from the tackler. Yeah, no question. That's a play that, that you saw a lot when Mike Bobo was calling plays. Whenever we had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, we've got it here again. Let me get the ball into an athlete's hand and see if he can make a play. Here's Sony with a carry, fighting for yards right of center, tries to bounce back towards the middle of the field. Not a lot of space there, but he pushes the ball forward up to the 39. Arian Pinton and Charles Harris, one of their very talented defensive ends, on the stop for the Missouri defense. The gain is two. It'll be second down and eight for the Bulldogs from our own 39. Missouri with an early field goal, leading it three to nothing. Lambert's in the shotgun. Two receivers right, make it three to the right, one to the left. Will quick throw to Blazevich was low, unable to bend down and make the catch down below his waist, and it's incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Let's go back to the sidelines, Chuck, with the Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck. Okay, we just got word on Reggie Davis. It is a right thigh contusion. Uh, they're saying he is out for now, but trying to get him a little treatment, hoping that uh, he, they say he may return. So keep your fingers crossed. Jason Stanley checks into the ball game for Georgia as one of the receivers. Godwin and Towns out to the right, and Mitchell to the left. It's third down and eight 
We work out of the gun with Sony in the backfield. Offset to the left. There's the snap. Grayson with time. Throws. Caught at the 50. And it's a first down for Georgia. That's Godwin, the freshman from Hogansville, Georgia, making the catch right in the middle of the G. Tackled by Ian Simon, the free safety, who had that pick a few moments ago off the tip. Dogs get the ball just across the midfield stripe at the uh, Missouri 49-yard line. And that's a gain of 14, and it's a first down for the Dogs, who trail 3 to nothing here, not quite four full minutes into the ball game. A good ball there by Grayson. If you notice, whenever Grayson hits his last step and just lets the football go on time, very accurate. If he gets flushed at all and has to pull the football down, that's when he loses some of that accuracy. Play fake. Lambert got all day to throw. Again, the pass is batted around the 40. Intended target was Mitchell at the 35. It was Anthony Sherrill's a strong safety. They got a hand on that one. Nearly another interception. That would have been a disaster. Grayson had all kinds of time. He had a deep drop after the play fake. Had tons of time to throw, but Missouri in the right place to tip the, uh, the intended pass to Malcolm Mitchell. Right, and Mitchell there on a dig route. Nobody was even close to him. If he catches that football, he's off to the races. But that underneath, that second layer of, of defense on the linebacker position just got in the way. Second and 10, handoff to Sony Michelle. Straight ahead running, powerful down to the 42. A gain of seven. It'll be third down and short. Kentrell Brothers and Ian Simon on the stop. Brothers coming into the game, leading the nation in tackles with 74. That's his 75th of the year right there. He'll be in around that football a lot for that Missouri defense. Just a counter play right there by the Dogs. Big block by Jay Rome as well to help Sony Michelle on the nice game. Out of the gun, handoff Sony at right tackle. The pile's moving and Sony's fighting for yards. Dives across the 40, gets the first down. Down to the 37-yard line, a pickup of five. Cubano and Wynn and Pike pushing the line back for Georgia, especially off that right side. And Sony just ducked in there behind it, and he did a little work himself, diving over the pile to get the extra yards. It's first and ten dogs from the Tiger 37. Boy, nothing fancy on that. Just a, a zone running play. Sony Michelle getting right in behind his big offensive lineman and finding the crease. Empty set with Keith Marshall, one of the receivers out wide to the right. Quick throw to Marshall. He makes the catch. He puts a hand on the ground as he's stumbling. He caught the football but couldn't keep his balance, and he falls down right around the line of scrimmage, maybe a tad behind it. At the 38, yeah, he's going to lose a yard on the stumble. The pass was, again, a little bit low. Marshall caught it, but then couldn't keep his balance after he had to go low to catch it, see? And for the first time today, Missouri gets out of that man-to-man single safety look. There they were, either in a two-deep or a quarters look. Still had room, though, if Marshall could catch that. And... Second and 11, handoff to Keith. Marshall's going to be hit behind the line back around the 40. Josh Augusta there. Hefty nose tackle, 6'4", and 335 from Peoria, Illinois. Just blew through our line and hit Marshall for a loss back at the 40. Now Brendan Douglas will check into the ball game. Georgia swapping out its tailbacks. Going through the first three here in this second series of the ball game. Georgia trails 3 to nothing, 8.50 on the clock, first quarter. Three receivers set, handed off to Douglas. Running this way. Missouri chases him back the other way. Brendan back to the 40, and they clobber him there. So he got back to the line of scrimmage, but nowhere near the first down marker, and it's fourth and long, and Georgia will bring on the punt team. And a pretty conservative play call there from the Georgia coaches. Third and super long, exactly the, the situations that we don't want to be in. Third and 14, third and 15, of course. Not many plays in the playbook to dial up. Just hoping you can pop a run and, and maybe sneak your way into field goal range. Cam Hilton is the deep receiver for Missouri as Colin Barber will try to pooch this one deep. A little backspin on this kick, a high end-over-end kick, spinning backwards, and Hilton will fall down with a fair catch at the 14-yard line, and that's where Missouri will have the football. The dogs try to play a little field position here in the first quarter. 26-yard pooch punt, no return, 8-0-1 remaining first quarter. It's Missouri 3, Georgia nothing. Timeout back in a moment. Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG.
Scanner Energy is a proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the Bulldogs score, Scanner Energy will make a $500 donation to the University of Georgia General Scholarship Fund. Missouri leads Georgia with 8.01 remaining in the first quarter. It's 3 to nothing. Tigers ball on their own 14-yard line, first and 10. Lock the freshman quarterback back into the shotgun. Play fake to Hansbro. Going to throw on the run far side. It's caught by Wesley Leftwich. A 6'3 senior from Columbia, Missouri. Makes the catch. Chased out of bounds by Jonathan Abram at the 22-yard line. And a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Nice ball there by Drew Locke. Moving to his left. They changing his launch point there. Little fake handoff to, to keep the, that backside linebacker at home and allow that flat route to develop. And Locke able to get his shoulders turned and deliver a nice pass. Out of the shotgun. Locke in the pocket. Here comes pressure from Thompson. He heaves the ball downfield, overthrows his receiver. Trenton Thompson, great pressure. He was trying to get it to Jamon Moore, a redshirt sophomore running a go route down the far sideline, but Locke had to get rid of it in a hurry. He's going to bring up third down and two on the incompletion. Boy, pretty good coverage downfield as well. Had a couple of Bulldogs right where the ball was intended. Nowhere for Locke to throw that one, and because he had to release it so early, more getting rid of that one than anything. Two receivers for the near side for the Tigers, one to the far side. They're moving to our right. Locks in the shotgun on third down and two. Here comes Georgia's defense. They bring a bunch, a quick throw on a hot route. It's low and incomplete. Rico McGraw in coverage, trying to go to Nate Brown, the sophomore receiver from North Gwinnett High School in Suwannee, Georgia. It's incomplete, and it's punt time for Missouri. With dogs there, went single safety man-to-man, so very aggressive. We actually brought our nickel back in pressure there. A quick slant by Nate Brown, but Rico McGraw just in perfect position, able to come and get his left hand over the shoulder of Brown and swat it away. Did a fine job of getting over the receiver without making contact. Here's Fatoni for the punt. Reggie Davis back in, backpedaling, running back, makes the catch around the 20. Now headed this way, trying to outrun the Missouri coverage team. He slams on the brakes, spins at the 18, cuts up field, and they'll tackle him at the 21-yard line. That was a heck of a punt by Corey Fatoni, 58 yards in the air and a one-yard return for Reggie Davis as he ran about 50 yards from the far side of the field to the near side. It's the dog's ball. That's the good news. 3 nothing. Missouri leading Georgia here in the first quarter. Timeout, Georgia football when we come back on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. to go in the first quarter. Tigers lead the Bulldogs 3 to nothing. Let's pause for station identification on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Georgia football powered by Georgia Power. We got a four receiver set with Jay Rome and uh, Davis on the near side. And on the far side, it's Mitchell and Godwin. Sony's back in. Work out of the shotgun with Grayson Lambert. First and 10 from our 22 for the dogs. We throw it to Davis, a screen to the near side with Rome blocking. Davis makes the catch, heads up field, gets to the 27 or the 28. Simon and Nate Howard, a backup defensive end, out on the near sideline to make the tackle. They'll spot the ball just shy of the 28, and that's a gain of six. And again, just a quick screen outside. We had essentially a twin set, but big J. Rome is now the lead blocker. Typically, you don't like that in the cover, too, but when 87's out there, it helps. Hand off Sony Michelle with Hicks blocking. Sony gets close to the 30, and then Missouri flips and drives him back. They'll give him forward progress up close to the 30. Brothers and Penton, the linebacker and a cornerback, on the tackle for the uh, Missouri defense. Going to bring up third down and a couple as Sony picks up two yards to the 30. Dogs get Brendan Douglas into the ball game. So we've used Douglas and Marshall and Michelle all at the uh, at the tailback spot here early in the ball game. Shotgun snap to Lambert. He fires. It's caught by Mitchell at the 35. Malcolm upfield at the 45. They knock him down at the 46. Ian Simon. Looked like Missouri Z may have gone for the pick, and the ball sailed over the defender's head, and Malcolm Mitchell was wide open and moved up the uh, up the field. That's exactly right. They they rotated to cover one very late there in the snap count. Grayson Lambert saw it, immediately went out to the hitch, 
And then Ian Simon, just as you said, he went for the interception. Uh, I thought for a second he was going to get there, but as soon as he missed, big play ensues there for the Dogs. 16-yard gain to the 46. Lambert going to dump this one over the line to the back. Brendan Douglas, he makes the catch in the middle of the field and into Tiger territory at the 48. Douglas, the junior back out of Augusta, Georgia, makes the catch and will pick up about seven yards on the play to the Tiger again, the Tiger 47. That was Donovan Newsom, one of the linebackers on the stop. But second and short, and this is what Georgia wants to use tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Get yourself into a position in second and third down where you've got the entire playbook at your disposal. Hand off Douglas. He starts out right, cuts back inside at the far hash. Makes contact at the 45. Blazevich and Harris, the tight ends, blocking for Georgia on that side, but it's uh, shy of the first down by about uh, a yard, so it'll be third and one for the Dogs from the Missouri 45. We trail three to nothing, 444, and a clock moving, remaining in quarter number one. And big Quavon Hicks now in the football game. That fullback is a lead blocker. Two big dudes. Douglas remains in at tail. He'll get the handoff. Douglas behind the line, going to be stopped shy of the first down as big Brady came in there and just uh, disrupted things in the backfield for Georgia, that redshirt freshman defensive end. Dogs are fourth down and a yard to go. We'll send in Welch, the fullback, and Harris, the tight end, and go for a power formation on fourth and short. Fourth and a yard at the Missouri 45-yard line. Power formation, handoff to Big Douglas while they hit him at the 45 and drive him back. He did not get it. That was Kentrell Brothers. Terrific play by the veteran senior linebacker out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. He hit uh, Douglas head on. It was power on power, and Brothers won that matchup. Yeah, that he did. Brothers can't come, coming into the football game, 74 tackles on the year. He's just been a menace all year long, and you can see why. You, not many people can line up Brendan Douglas and stop him dead in his tracks, but exactly what happened right there. Tigers will take over at their own 45-yard line. As the Dogs fail to convert on fourth and one, there's a TV timeout. We'll keep it right here with 3.59 to go in the first quarter, and Missouri leading it by a score of three to nothing. The first play of the game was a tipped pass by the Missouri defense, and Ian Simon picked off the tip, returned it to the one, but a terrific goal line stand by the Georgia defense held Missouri to a field goal try. Baggett converted a 20-yarder, and that's been all the scoring to this point. As we check in with Chuck Dowdle on the sidelines for a Cook's Pest Control sideline report, Chuck. Uh, Scott, J- uh, J- J- Jay Rome got banged up a while ago on that play where he was blocking uh, on that little uh, flare pass. As a result, he came out. He's been trying to kind of work it off. Now he's gotten it taped up, and he was kind of jogging a little bit on the sideline. At this point, it'll, it would appear that uh, with the tape and trying to get a little uh, heat on it, maybe he'll get back in there. All right, let's hope so. Reggie Davis was banged up early, but he returned to the game. In fact, he was uh, shaken up on the uh, opening kickoff, but uh, he has since been back in there returning a punt a few moments ago. Checking the Comcast business scoreboard, Florida and LSU underway in Baton Rouge. They are tied at 7. That's a first quarter score, second quarter. Second quarter in Baton Rouge at Tiger Stadium. Gators and Tigers are tied at 7. Michigan State beat Michigan on the final play, I believe it was, earlier today. Uh, Alabama ripped up uh, Texas A&M with another impressive performance. Uh, what else we got? Any other um, upsets cooking? Oh, Ole Miss lost to Memphis in Memphis today. Georgia Tech loses its fifth in a row to Pitt. So there you go. South Carolina winner uh, minus Steve Spurrier in their first game uh, without Steve as the head coach, uh, at least in the last 11 years, a 19-10 over the Commodores. Here it's 3 to nothing, Missouri leading Georgia, and the Tigers have good field position to start this possession after holding the ball or holding uh, the dogs on fourth down and taking over on downs. They'll have it first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Lock back in the shotgun. Two receivers left and right for the Tigers. They shift hands, bro. We'll hand it off to him. He's going to run right, stop, head up field, and the dogs will bring him down as he crosses the 45. Davin Bellamy, and that long six foot five body reaching out and grabbing the legs of 
Russell Hansbro and pulling him down at the 46-yard line. A gain of one, second down and nine. For an offensive formation there for Missouri, had twin receivers to both sides. They were stacked on top of one another and both outside the numbers with their splits. So trying to gain the edge and create some alleys with that offensive formation. Lock at six foot four, back in the pocket. Here comes pressure, slings it downfield. It is caught as Nate Brown, the receiver, broke away from coverage and got behind our defense. A long gain down to the Georgia 21 yard line. But we were in quarter coverage there, and one of the weaknesses is that deep post over the middle, exactly what Missouri had drawn up there, and Lock able to put that one on the money. 33-yard gain for the Tigers down to the Georgia 21. It's first and 10 there. Tigers leading it 3 to nothing. Lock in the pocket with time. Pump fakes. Bailey's going to sack him for a loss back at the 27-yard line. Sterling Bailey came in. Lock pump faked, but that didn't get Sterling off his back. And Bailey, with the sack, will slow the uh, Missouri offense down for a sizable loss. Back, they're going to put it back on the 28-yard line, a loss of 8 or seven anyway, a yeah, loss of seven. It'll be second down and 17. Yeah, give, give credit there to the Georgia secondary. Really no place for Locke to throw that football. And on top of that, the good aggressive pass rush. We just pushed back the Mizzou offensive line a couple of steps. No lanes for Locke to scramble through. First sack of the year for Bailey. Locke with a quick throw to a tight end out on the left. It's caught and then tackled at the 20. Yard line, that's Sean Culkin, who's been out the last two games with an injury. Jake Gaines makes the stop for Georgia's defense. Uh, they got seven, they got eight back. It's going to be third and nine, however. The ball just inside the Georgia 20. Well, just a quick little hitch there. I guess cover two, finding the soft spot in the underneath zone. Nice read. Deloach, Carter, and Wilkinson check in for the Georgia defense. Third and nine. Tigers inside the Georgia 20, leading it 3-0 here in the first. Locke in the shotgun, takes the snap, rolls right, throws off his back foot, and it is incomplete in the end zone. He was trying to throw on the run. He got enough on the ball. He's got a good strong arm, but he threw it out of bounds in the right corner, trying to go to Wesley Leftwich. It's incomplete fourth down. Here comes the field goal unit. Let's go down to the field and check in with Chuck Dowdle for Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck? Yeah, guys, that last series, offensive series for the dogs, you notice Brendan Douglas in there a lot. Sony Michelle has a left thigh contusion, but I am told he will return. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. Here's Andrew Baggett for a second field goal try of the night. This from the 28-yard line on the far hash, kicking right. It'll be a 38-yard try for Baggett. Well within his range, the kick is away, and the kick is no good. The Dogs. Defense again. Defense playing very well here in the first half. Missouri's had some pressure on them, especially on that opening uh, series when they had it first and goal at the one. The Dogs held them to three. This time, Missouri misses a three-point opportunity with 91 seconds to go in the quarter. And going back to that third down play, good pressure by Jake Gaines that forced Drew Locke out of the pocket to his right. Jake continued in uh, uh, on his pursuit, forcing Locke to throw that football on the run. He actually had Leftwich on a corner route that was open that an accurate ball probably would have resulted in six points, but Jake Gaines is having another good football game early in this one. Dogs will have the football when time comes back in at the 20. It'll be first and 10 with a minute 31 remaining in the opening quarter. And Missouri with a 3-0 lead. The Dogs have put it in the air nine times, I'm told by Jay Black, our statistician, this is the most passes George has had in an f- opening quarter so far this season. Well, and, and part of what's dictating that right now are the defensive looks that Missouri's given us. Came out of the gates here early with some cover one, some cover zero. So cover one, just man-to-man with the free safety. Cover zero, you're manned up across the board. They've started to mix in a little bit of cover two here uh, in the last series, but that heavy man look means we're going to have opportunities to throw the football. You know someone who makes an impact on their community? Team UGA, presented by Georgia Power, is now accepting nominations for members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude. Submit your nominations by going to georgiadogs.com. Well, the dog's offense ready to go. Chuck's report about Sony Michelle with a, a thigh contusion. He's back out there. As Chuck said, he would go back in the game, and he is back in the game, along with Blazovich and Rome. Two tight ends set. We go power. 
and handed off to Sony Michelle. Looking for a hole. He found a little bit of a seam. Dives through there at the 20 and up ahead to the 25-yard line. He got five yards at right guard and right tackle. Sony saw a little bit of a seam and just jumped right in it. Yeah, good pick up there. Five yards on first down. Again, Missouri goes cover zero. They've got those safeties up close to the box. Now, we're in 21 personnel, as you mentioned, so two tight ends, one running back. Both those safeties down in the box, head up over our tight ends. Balance line. Here's Sony Michelle straight up the gut. Big hole there and a quick burst out to the 35-yard line. Ian Simon got his leg and brought him down in the Missouri secondary. Rome comes out now, and Godwin will come back in for the Georgia offense. But up to the 35, a quick 10-yard burst for Sony Michelle, and it's a first down, Georgia, at the 35. It's right on the back of Brandon Cablano, and then Isaiah Wynn able to get up to the second level and seal off a linebacker from getting to Sony. Three receivers near side. Blazevich the closest to the line of scrimmage on the near side. Shotgun snap to Lambert. He'll throw it in the right flat. It's caught by Michelle. He dodges one man. He's still on his feet. Running through tackles at the 40 and the 41 and up to the 44-yard line. Finally stopped by Kentrell Brothers, the senior linebacker. But nine yards on that pass play out in the right flat to Sony Michelle, and it will be second and one for the Bulldogs from our 44-yard line, and that may be the final play of the quarter. Less than five seconds to go, and the Dogs may not get off another snap, and they won't. So the first 15 minutes are in the books. Georgia moving on offense, second and one coming up. As the Bulldogs go to quarter number two, it's Missouri three and Georgia nothing. Back to Athens and Sanford Stadium on homecoming Saturday after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Welcome back to Athens along with Eric Zier and Chuck Dabble, Scott Howard. With you once again with Neil Williamson and uh, Chris Schiavone, Jay Black, Tony Schiavone, Cabell Philpott, the entire crew with you once again. Bulldog fans, did you know the StubHub app is personalized just for you? Now with the StubHub app, you can select your favorite teams and artists and discover new ones as well. Start at StubHub and let the fun find you. StubHub is the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of Georgia Athletics. The Dogs will have the football, second down and a yard to go from our own 44-yard line. Now we'll be moving to our right as we view it here from the Larry Munson press box. Three to nothing, Missouri leading Georgia. The Dogs shut out in the first quarter. Had an interception on the first play on a tipped pass. Missouri returned that pick to the one-yard line, but the Bulldog defense didn't allow him in the end zone. Forced a field goal. And that's been all the scoring by Andrew Baggett. He just missed one a few moments ago on his second attempt of the ball game. Lambert under center. Lone setback is Sony. Michelle takes the handoff. Running behind Blazevich and Pike and Cablano at right guard. And uh, Michelle to the 45. He got a yard and he got the first down. And, Scott, we keep getting these looks from the Missouri defense. They are mixing in a little bit of of two deep zone, but still a heavy dose of cover zero. So, man-to-man, we're going to have shots outside deep if we want them throughout this football game with with the way Missouri is trying to play us right now. Michelle already responsible for 25 total yards on this drive. Play fake Lambert. He's got time, sets up, and throws deep. He will go down the middle of the field in double coverage, trying to go to Malcolm Mitchell. The safety came over, and the pass is broken up down around the 10 or 11-yard line. It'll be incomplete on the deep ball. That was uh, Logan Cheadle and Kenya Dennis back deep in coverage on Georgia's leading receiver, Malcolm Mitchell, who will come to the sidelines after that play. It'll be second down and 10 for the Dogs from our 45. Just had a dig post combination. We go up over the top, again cover zero. But Missouri able to come off the dig. We were a little bit late throwing that football, able to drop off that dig and get in the way of the post route to Malcolm. Lambert, quick throw to Shekenneth Williams, makes the catch in Tiger territory down at the 44. Arian Penton, the cornerback, on the stop. That's the first catch of the year for Shekenneth Williams, a sophomore from Macon, Georgia, 6'1", and right at 200 pounds, makes his first grab coming from the right on the quick slant. That's a first down for Georgia. Yeah, a little play action to hold the inside linebacker and create that lane to Williams on the slant, well executed across the board. Gain of 11 for the Dogs. They go back 
back into the eye with Keith Marshall as the tailback. Here's a toss to Marshall, running behind the block of Quavon Hicks at left tackle. Marshall will get inside the 45. He's spun down at the 43-yard line, tackled by the linebackers, Kentrell Brothers and Michael Shearer. And they are the one and two leading tacklers for the Missouri defense. But Brothers is leaving everybody else in his wake. He's in on just about every stop for the Missouri defense. Boy, and already called his name a number of number of times a night. You're right. He is everywhere on the football field. Gain of a couple for Keith Marshall. Second and eight from the Tiger 43. Offset eye for the Dogs. Play fake to Marshall. Lambert again throws the deep ball. The receiver broke off. And the only man down there was Kenya Dennis. He hit him right in the hands and he dropped it. Well, some miscommunication between Malcolm Mitchell and Grayson Lambert. Malcolm broke off his route around the 20 to the 25, and the ball went deep down inside the 10, and the only guy who could catch it was Kenya Dennis, and fortunately for Georgia, he didn't. Yeah, and not really sure who that miscommunication is going to fall on. Typically, if you've got a hitch route, it converts to a fade. If you've got a deeper out route, oftentimes it can stay on. It was press coverage, and if Malcolm Mitchell there read that his cornerback was bailing on him. He's going to break that off. We had to play action, so Grayson turned his back to it. Third and eight. We throw it quickly to Malcolm Mitchell. He just snatches that thing out of the air, tackled by Penton at the 34-yard line. That's a first down, a gain of nine for Malcolm Mitchell and the Dogs on a quick throw, and the Dogs move the sticks again. And it's uh, first and ten at the Missouri 34. Dogs trail 3 nothing. We're early second quarter, 1245 in the quarter, and the clock moving. Boy, strength of Malcolm Mitchell, just impressive. He actually got bumped on that slant route, still able to get back on and maintain his path and go up and grab it. We go under center now. Sony's back in the backfield. He'll take the give, runs straight ahead. He gets hit at the 31 and driven back first into the turf after they turned him around. Brothers and Beckner, Terry Beckner, freshman defensive tackle from St. Louis, a 300-pounder, stopping Michelle. But Sony got about four, four and a half yards on the carry. It'll be second down. They'll call it six. The ball on the 30. Boy, exactly what you want to see if you're the dogs. You want four yards on first down. Gives you your entire playbook to attack this Missouri defense. 11th play of the drive coming up. Lambert, quick throw to the near side. A screen to Godwin. He makes the catch down the line of scrimmage. Heads downfield to the 25-yard line. Stopped by the cornerback, Dennis. The dogs doing a good job going left, right, spreading it out, running and uh, mixing in the pass and moving the football. And down to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of five more. It'll be third about a yard. It's the third time we've thrown that little bubble screen, but I like what we're doing. We're getting... Jay Rome on the outside as a lead blocker there. That's nothing more than a running play that counts as a pass. Sony offset to the left of Lambert. Takes the handoff. Runs straight up the gut. Big Theus opening up a bit of a hole there. Right up the near hash. And Michelle to the 21. That's a first down. Brothers made the stop. But too little, too late for the Tiger defense. They don't stop the dogs on the third down play. And Sony gets four. And it's a fresh set of downs for the Bulldog offense. Yeah, nice job there by Sony Brothers. Hit him right at the line marker for the first down. And Sony able to use his strength to fall forward to easily move the chains. Mitchell and Godwin out left, and Davis to the right will throw it to the back. Michelle into the left flat. They hit him at the 25. He spins away, gets outside the numbers, and got positive yardage. They should have had him for a three-yard loss, but Sony was able to spin away from the tackler and get the ball down close to the 15. They'll mark it, I believe, at the 16-yard line. He ended up with a five-yard gain and should have been a three-yard loss. Yeah, and the versatility of Sony Michelle it can be seen right there. That was a little swing pass to Sony, but that was the primary receiver and the only receiver for Grayson Lambert. You had Lyman pulling out in front of Sony. That's just a sweep that Grayson gets credit for. Here's a toss to Sony, a stiff arm in the backfield, but Missouri will fight it off and stop him at the 25. Donovan Newsom at the 20-yard line, excuse me. Right down the line of scrimmage, we tried to run uh, Sony to the right with a blocker, and Sony will come out of the ball game now. And it'll be third down and long, third and nine from the Tiger 20-yard line, so we lost four yards on that play. The 15th play of the drive, Brendan Douglas in as the lone setback. Two receivers left, Godwin and Davis, and two to the right, Mitchell and Blazevich in the slot. 
Out of the gun. Snap to Lambert. Looks to the left. Now looks over the middle. Throws it to D- Douglas. He's wide open. Brenda Douglas made the catch at the 16. And he may have the first down. We'll see. The brothers brought him down around the 11 or 12. Looks like we need to get close to the 11 for the first down. It's going to be a little bit shy. And will be fourth down and about a yard or so. And Georgia will try to tie it up. Sit on the field goal unit. A good read there by... Grayson Lambert, Missouri sat back in cover two, soft coverage right at the sticks, everybody covered up, and Grayson immediately got that ball to Douglas on his check down and and almost got to the sticks. That was an eight-yard gain. This is going to be a 30-yard field goal try by Marshall Morgan. The snap and the hold are good, and the kick splits the pipes to our right, and we're tied at three on the 30-yard field goal. By Georgia's senior kicker from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Marshall Morgan. 8.53 to go, first half in Athens. It's Georgia 3, Missouri 3, and a timeout. Back in a moment, Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Dogs tied up on Marshall Morgan's 30-yard field goal. Another All-State good hands field goal. And with that kick, Walton Gass is kicking it for charity and donating another $500 to local charities. Walton Gass, Georgia proud. And the uh, drive numbers, 68 yards, 16 plays. And 7 minutes and 38 seconds off the clock. A 30-yard field goal uh, by Marshall Morgan. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. And that was Georgia's longest drive by time and plays this season. And we got three out of it. Here's the kick. Georgia tries an onside kick. Marshall Morgan. Oh, it didn't roll 10 yards. It died at the 9 yards. We tried just a little squibber right off the tee. And Marshall Morgan was going to get it. He would have been right on top of it, and the doggone ball just died at the nine-and-a-half-yard mark. It didn't go the ten. Missouri's going to have the ball. Boy, it was set up perfectly as well, and it just looked like a chip shot that bites and just completely sticks on you. Exactly what happened. But one thing that, that you're seeing right Early now the field is that the ball was never touched by the receiving team. The kicker can go on the ball prior to going 10 yards. Therefore, it's first and 10 receiving team. What, what you're seeing right now, Scott, the, the fourth down we go for it, although we don't make it, the onside kick here, it's belief in our defense that we can shut down a Missouri offense that, that has really struggled throughout the year. Well, right now they're minus seven running the football. They've got 43 total yards in a 3-3 ball game. Here's Locke's pass. Oh, wow! My goodness! Malcolm Parrish with a shot on Kenyon DeLosa, who made a catch. They were trying to set up a receiver screen on the near side, and Parrish just shot up field and just knifed underneath the receiver DeLosa took his legs right out from under him at the 48 yard line that's a four yard loss it's the same pass you've seen the dogs run a number of times difference there Malcolm Parrish saw it right from the get-go and there's no Jay Rome blocking for you lock out of the shotgun gonna hand it to Witter Ian Witter Ishwitter, excuse me, running it straight ahead. Gaines and Bellamy make the stop for the Georgia defense. Didn't quite get back to the original line of scrimmage. Uh, and uh, Witter got, uh, he got about four or so. Mauger and Davis check into the ball game now. I believe maybe for the first time in the Georgia secondary. We've shuffled in uh, a lot of players in and out of the ball game. It's third down and ten and a half for the Tigers. Missouri 0 for 3 on third down tries. They're at the Georgia 45-yard line moving to our left. They snap it to Locke in the shotgun. He'll throw it deep down the field, and it is in the hands and then out of the hands of the intended receiver, Nate Brown. He jumped in the air, had it hit him in the palms, couldn't hang on to the football at the 30. Mauger and McGraw, Rico McGraw, in coverage for the Georgia defense. And again, Missouri fails to convert on third down, and it's fourth and long, and they'll send on the punt unit. And the fabulous Corey Fatoni to kick it away. Good aggressive play call there by Coach Pruitt. We go man-to-man. Even in a third and long situation, we bring Jake Gaines on pressure right through the A-gap. Reggie Davis 
is the deep receiver as Fatoni tries to pooch it deep, and he does what he wants. Gets a lot of hang time on that reverse spin down at the 13-yard line on the fair catch from Davis. A 33-yard punt, no return. Dogs ball on our own 13. We're tied at three here in the second quarter. 7.29 remaining in the half. We'll come back for more Bulldogs football after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. inside the IMG Network studios. Time for a Comcast Business scoreboard update. Comcast built for business. Well, six-ranked LSU using the flea flicker, digging deep in the playbook. 21-7 to set up that third field goal. Uh, f- third touchdown did the flea flicker. Leonard Fournette, 12 carries, 84 yards and two touchdowns. First SEC running back, Scott, to rush for 1,000 yards in the first five games of the season. He's amazing. Yeah, impressive stuff as uh, the Tigers are leading uh, Florida in Baton Rouge. Here, the Tigers and Bulldogs are tied at three. Georgia football is brought to you by and powered by Georgia Power. The Dogs first and ten on our 13. Play fake Lambert. Backs up on the four with plenty of time. Throws it downfield. It's caught by Godwin at the 31. He spins away from the tackle across the 40 to the 45 and chased down from behind and knocked forward to about the 49-yard line. Donovan Newsom, the linebacker, had to speed up and catch the speedy Godwin, who made a nice catch on the far side. A good ball thrown by Lambert that time, Z. Yeah, it was. It was a it better protection, though, from our big boys up front. That play took a long time to develop. It was a deep out route, and a team in Missouri not used to giving up big chunks of, chunks of yardage. They got victimized there. Yeah, they gave up 35 on that pass play. A rarity indeed against the Tiger defense. Dogs ball, first and 10 on our 48. Lambert backpedaling, throws it into a crowd, and it's incomplete. Trying to go to Malcolm Mitchell. He had two guys on him. Sheryls, I think, got a hand on the ball to deflect it away from Malcolm Mitchell's near midfield. And it's going to go incomplete and bring up second down and 10. Malcolm was complaining to the officials that he was being interfered with, but no flag on the play. Boy, and Anthony Sherrill's there almost had himself another interception. Lambert way late throwing that football. It almost cost him. Hand off Keith Marshall. Big hole on the left side. They're grabbing on his arm, pulling him down on one side of his body. Kentrell Brothers hung on for dear life. Marshall was still running, though. He had those legs churning, and he got close to the first down marker. And we'll see what they spotted just shy down to the uh, Tiger 43-yard line. They got nine. It's third and one. We go quickly. Quick throw left side. Now flags and whistles, and we've got illegal procedure. We were trying to go fast, and it's going to cost the dogs five yards on third and less than a yard. It'll be third and about six now for the Bulldogs. So they'll change the play, and Marshall comes out. Douglas goes in, also checking into the game. Kenneth Towns. Get in and out faster with the Flash Foods mobile app available for iPhone and Android. Download the Flash Foods mobile app for great savings and convenience. Available on your iPhone and your Android device. Poor Scott, we had him exactly where we wanted him to there. Just it was going to be a quick screen pass to the outside. We went tempo and Missouri not even close to getting set up. Douglas, the lone setback. The junior from Augusta will go out. Lambert will be in trouble, spins in the pocket and runs right into the arms, trying to spin away from one guy, Terry Beckner Jr., that talented freshman defensive tackle, 300-pounder from St. Louis, going to wrap him up at the 50. So it came unraveled there late in that possession, and the dogs from the 50 will have to kick it away. Now, Missouri knows how to get after the quarterback. 18 sacks coming into this football game, and all over Grayson right there. That penalty cost us. That's their first sack of the game. They had five sacks and nine tackles for loss against Florida last week. This punt by Colin Barber going to try to pooch it deep, and it's barely caught on a fair catch by Cam Hilton. He went to the turf again, caught that one on his fingertips right on the 10-yard line. Nice high-hanging kick, a 40-yard punt. One of the better efforts by Colin Barber, and Missouri backed up on its own 10-yard line. 5.18 to go. We play field position once again in a 3-3 contest. George and Missouri here on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG.
Any down could be the one that changes the game, so try the play where you go big on refreshment with all taste and zero calories. Coke Zero. You don't know zero until you've tried it. 5.18 to go in the quarter, in the in the half actually, 3-3 ball game, Georgia and Missouri. Tigers first and 10 on their own 10. They're moving to our left. Out of the shotgun, Locke going to hand it off to Hansbro, and we will gobble him up somewhere in the vicinity of two yards from the, high, the, from the line of scrimmage. Leonard Floyd, big 84, got in there, and then about six of his other teammates joined him in stopping Hansbro. He didn't get back to the line. We'll see where they spot the football. And that's one way. Well, they got a, yeah, they, they said he got back to the 10. They gave him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. I didn't see that. Well, that's one way to stop yards after contact, though. You get 10 guys in on the tackle. <laughs> That'll do it. No gain on the play. Second and 10 from the 10. Hansbro again tries to sweep around wide to the right. And the big Ledbetter, the freshman, chased him down from behind. Starting from his right side in position, chased him all the way down the line and made the stop. Nice play by the freshman uh, again on the 10-yard line. So two plays and no gain. It's third and 10. Yeah, nobody there to hold Ledbetter. Then contained, came right down the line of scrimmage and showed a nice burst for 251 pounds. Third down and 10 right in front of the students for the Tigers. A lot of noise down there. And they'll go with a four-receiver set. Locking the shotgun. Dogs threatening blitz. Here they come. Here's Locke. Going to throw it. It's caught at the 10, middle of the field. A lot of running room for Hansbro. Straight up the field, zigzagging between the hash marks all the way across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Z, middle of the field was wide open, and Missouri took advantage of it. Yeah, give Locke some credit there. Dogs actually showed man-to-man. Got back into a, a cover two zone, but we were spying with our middle linebacker which is why Hansborough was so wide open and locked. Good job in recognizing, getting to his check down. A lot of green grass around him as soon as he caught it. 24 yards, Mauger and Wilkerson on the tackle. Tiger's going to throw it out to the right side. It's caught by Cam Hilton at the 35. He gets about five more after the catch. Malcolm Parrish with the stop, but Missouri moving quickly from third and 10 on their own 10. They're already out to their own 40-yard line. Second down and four to go with 3.09 remaining in the quarter. Hand off to Witter. He runs it outside of right tackle, trying to angle towards the sideline. Not a lot of space there. Georgia stops it well on that uh, right edge of the offensive line. Yeah, nothing happening right now for the Tigers on the ground. That run may have gotten them into positive yardage running the football before that play. Actually, it didn't. They're still minus two running the football. The freshman linebacker, Natrez Patrick, out of Atlanta made the stop. Then he came out of the ball game. It's third down and about three yards to go. Tigers on their own 41-yard line. We're 3-3 here late in the half. Out of the shotgun. They bring him in in motion to the near side. Locke looks right. Now backpedals, throws it up, hangs it in the air, and it is caught, I think, by Witter in traffic. Nice catch by Ish Witter, a 5'10 sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Made the catch in Georgia territory. That's a first down, ball down on the Georgia 45-yard line. A gain of 14 on that pass play. It looked like Locke was just hanging it up there to get rid of it. He could throw that pass 100 more times, and it would never be caught. Never be. He was running backwards and threw that up into traffic to Witter. It, it was just perfect. Four receivers in for the Tigers. They've come off the deck from their own 10 at third and 10. They're on the Georgia 45. Another quick throw to the tight end. Caught at the 40 and tackled at the 38. The Sean Culkin. Natrez Patrick again back in the game making the tackle. The ball's on the 38-yard line. A pickup of seven as Missouri's chunking it down the field here late in the second quarter in a 3-3 ball game. There's a minute 35 to go in the second. Another good read there by Locke. Just a, a quick hitch by the tight end. Outside release, takeoff by the outside receiver. And that cover two look, it occupies the corner. Snap to Locke. He's got time going deep down the middle of the field. And it is caught at the 10. We had a guy at the 15 leaping for the ball. Mauger made the stop. That was Kimbrough trying to leap and bat the ball away. Couldn't quite get to it. Cam Hilton made the catch. It's first and goal for the Tigers on the Georgia nine-yard line. 29 yards on the pickup. The Tigers have furiously come roaring down the field. They're working on a 90-yard drive here. First and goal at the Dogs' nine. Moving to our left. They work out of the shotgun. 
Lock going to hand it off to Hansborough. Starts to the right. And Georgia will defend it well and stretch out the play close to the sideline. Stop it on the numbers at the nine. Davin Bellamy First makes the tackle for the Georgia defense. Missouri. And a timeout, as you heard from our referee, John McDade. 47 seconds left in the half. It's Georgia 3, Missouri 3, but the Tigers are threatening. Timeout in Athens. We're back in a moment on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Georgia football powered by Georgia Power. 3-3 contest. Here's your Georgia scoring recap brought to you by BB&T. Sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Member FDIC. Missouri has a 20-yard field goal. Georgia has a 30-yard field goal. That's been all the scoring to this point. The Tigers right now second in goal from the Georgia 8, however, as they threaten to break the tie with 47 seconds to go in the half. On this drive, Drew Locke, 5 for 5 for 80 yards before this drive started. Back at the Missouri 10, he was 4 for 8 for less than 50 yards, but he's cooking on this possession. Second and goal from the Dogs 8. Locks in the shotgun. He stands in the pocket and looks to the right sideline right now as the clock gets under 10 seconds. The play clock down to 8. He's still barking out the plays. Now we're back into position. Play clock at 3. There's the snap. Going to hand it off to Witter. Witter shaking and baking, running to the line of scrimmage. Got close to the five, and then the dogs stack it up and drive him back. Bellamy and Abram leading the Georgia charge. They'll spot the ball on the six. It'll be a two-yard game, and it'll be third down and goal with a clock moving at 30 seconds. Now 29. Missouri taking its time. Clock is still ticking down to 25. Third and goal from the dogs, six for the Tigers. And we won the game of cat and mouse right there. Dogs lined up in cover two. Missouri changed the play. And we then went down a single safety and stuffed the run. Tigers call a timeout, Z, with 16 seconds left in the half. And a third down and uh, six. Third down and goal from the six is coming up. Locks numbers 9 of 13, 126 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. For Georgia, Grayson Lambert is 13 of 19, 132 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. The uh, Tigers have rushed tonight for only one yard, one total yard of offense on the ground. Georgia's rushed for 46. And as we told you, Missouri's passed for 126. The Dogs' rushing attack, 46 yards. And we've used uh, our top three backs because uh, Sony Michelle. Has a a thigh contusion, we are told. He's got 37 yards on 10 carries. Keith Marshall, three for nine. And Brendan Douglas has a couple of yards on four tries. So here we go with 16 seconds left in the uh, second quarter. And the Tigers with the ball on the Georgia six. Third and goal from there. They run a man in motion. That's Lethwich sprinting out far to the right. Out of the shotgun, Locke drops back. Here comes pressure, flag down, throw it to the left corner of the end zone. Incomplete, ball out of bounds, trying to go to Nate Brown. But let's check a flag back at the 11. I think it's going to be an eagle, illegal shift against Missouri. Intended for Brown. Brown the formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. If you couldn't hear the... Uh, microphone there at uh, fourth down as Georgia declines the five-yard penalty on Missouri so the Tigers will once again trot out their field goal unit line of scrimmage is the Georgia six here's Andrew Baggett just inside the far hash kicking to the left into the student section behind the goal post to our left it'll be Baggett from about 24 yards looks like they'll spot the ball on the 14. As Eddie Prince, the backup quarterback, is the holder. There's the snap and the hold. The kick by Baggett is high and end over end and good. So the Tigers, with seven seconds left in the first half, regain the lead. It's six to three. So three field goals tonight. A bit unexpected as far as the offensive numbers are concerned. We knew coming in, Missouri's offense was was struggling a little bit, but uh, Georgia's move the football pretty well just haven't been able to stick it in the end zone all we've got to show for our work tonight is a 30-yard Marshall Morgan field goal yeah and it's really the MO for this Missouri defense right they're going to sit back uh, they're only giving up 13 and a half points 
per game so far on the year, so they've been stingy in that category. Uh, they just make teams drive the football field. Uh, they've been one of the best in the country uh, as it concerns not giving up big plays. We've had the one 35-yard pass. Outside of that, it is just uh, little chunks of yardage at a time. So they're doing the same thing to us. They've done to everybody, make us drive the field and, and then really get – strong as you as you near the red zone and, and force field goal attempts it's exactly what's happened but between the 20s we've you know at least it feels like we're moving the football well so the tigers will kick it off with seven seconds left squib kick gonna bounce several times and georgia will fall on it at the 28 yard line a second ticks away as the dogs roquan smith covered up that bouncing ball on the squib kick by Corey fatoni and the dogs have six seconds. Ball on our own 28, trailing six to three. And we'll see what we decide to do. It looks like they're going to just line up and take a knee and head to the locker room. Yeah, well, all the all the, coaches, tight. all the coaches right next to us have already vacated the vacated the box. So we're just taking a knee and victory. There's the snap to Lambert. Touches the knee down. That'll be the end of the half. And Missouri will go into the locker room with a lead of three points. It's the Tigers six. And the Bulldogs three. It's time now for the Delta halftime interview with Coach Rick. And let's head down to Chuck Dowdle on the field. Chuck. Coach, great defensive battle. Do you feel like you're moving the ball okay against them? We've moved it well, but we got to get points. We got a field goal, obviously. Uh, we got to convert everything that uh, is in front of us as far as third down, even fourth downs. And we got to get it in the end zone. You know, we take care of business, we'll get it in the end zone. All right, there he's going. That's uh, that's, you know, that's pretty much the obvious, isn't it? I mean, we we we, uh, we have moved the ball, as you've said. I think, Eric, you were talking earlier, Scott, talking earlier about the fact that Georgia's moved it well between the twenties. I think, in fact, time of possession, probably overall yardage, the dogs are on top in this game, but they're trailing on the scoreboard, and uh, that's what we got to get corrected here at halftime. Chuck, thank you. That interview brought to you by Delta, the official airline of the Georgia Bulldogs. You're exactly right. Statistically, Georgia leads in just about every every category, over 50% in third down conversions, 0 for 1 on fourth, but trailing on the scoreboard by a score of 6-3. to three. Tigers lead the Dogs at halftime. Stick around. Hondo and the gang with halftime festivities coming up from Athens and Sanford Stadium after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Welcome to the Georgia Football Halftime Report. Anchoring our coverage at the stadium, here's Neil Hondo Williamson. On a perfect night for football, Georgia not so perfect in the first half offensively. Missouri leading the dogs 6-3. to three. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sanford Stadium, where the Redcoat Marching Band for Homecoming is playing some Stevie Wonder medley out there. The evening started uh, with a near-disastrous play on the first play from scrimmage for Georgia. An interception by Missouri was run back to the one-yard line. Thank Ken Towns, a receiver, for catching. Uh, Ken Towns, who probably wouldn't have been on the field except Reggie Davis, was banged up on the uh, kickoff return. Ken Towns caught the defensive back at the one-yard line. Georgia's defense able to hold the Tigers out of the end zone and force a field goal. And so far, it's been a battle of field goals. Six to three, Mizzou leading the Dogs here in Athens. Time now for our Athlete of the Week, and let's pass it off to Steve Bell. Steve? All right, thank you, Steve. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Bulldog Sports Network from IMG. Well, the Dogs need a win tonight here in Athens, and we need LSU to give us some help with Florida down in Baton Rouge. Campbell Philpott is standing by in the Bulldog studios. He'll let you know how the Tigers are doing against the Gators in just two minutes. Stay with us. It's 6-3, to three, Missouri at the half. This is the Bulldog Sports Network from IMG. <laughs> Now, 
now more of the Georgia Football Halftime Report. Let's get a check of the first half stats presented by Scana Energy. Switch to Scana Energy and save big all season long. Once again, here's Neil Hondo Williamson. Hi there. Welcome back to a gorgeous night from Athens. Dogs trailing Missouri 6-3, to three, and the stat that really stands out the most is the fact that Missouri hasn't been able to run the ball on Georgia uh, at all. 11 carries for the Tigers for only one net yard thus far. Georgia's defense has been doing a great job. But actually, Missouri has been inside the red zone three times and come away with two field goals and one miss. Uh, in case you missed it earlier, uh, the Tigers were able to open the game with an interception of Georgia's first play from scrimmage, a pass from Grayson Lambert that was intended for Jeb Blazevich over the middle. It was uh, tipped by a linebacker, intercepted and returned to the one-yard line, but the Dogs' defense stood up and held Missouri to just a field goal, and it's 6-3 to three is where we stand right now. And checking those stats, Scana Energy is a proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the Dogs score, Scana Energy will make a $500 donation to the University of Georgia General Scholarship Fund. Go Dogs! So, let's look at those stats. First down, Missouri has only four in the game. Georgia with 10. As we said, Missouri with one net rushing yard. The Dogs with just 45. Sony Michelle, the leading rusher, with Nick Chubb out. Sony with 10 carries for 37 yards tonight. Keith Marshall has had three carries for nine yards. Brendan Douglas, four carries for two yards. Total offense, Missouri has managed only 127 yards. The Dogs, 177. Uh, Like I said, we've done a great job against Missouri so far, but we can't get our offense uncorked enough. Uh, We've tried a couple of different things. Tried a fourth and one at the Missouri 45 where the dogs were stopped and we also tried an onside kick after we made the field goal which would have been successful. Unfortunately the ball only traveled nine yards has to travel ten for it to be in fair play for everyone. Terry Godwin, Georgia's leading receiver four catches for 64 yards and we're trailing six to three here at the half. We'll come back with more with Scott Howard, Eric Zire and Chuck Dowdle as uh, the second half continues from Athens. It's 6-3 to three, Missouri on the Bulldog Sports Network from IMG. Welcome back to Sanford Stadium. Halftime winding down. Scott Howard with you once again along with Eric Zier. Chuck Dottle on the sidelines tonight. And Georgia trails Missouri after one half of play by score of 6-3. to three. Missouri with a couple of Andrew Baggett field goals for uh, all of their points tonight. Georgia's managed a 30-yard Marshall Morgan field goal. Missouri got a gift right off the bat as the, uh, they intercepted a Grayson Lambert pass on the first play of the game. The pass was tipped. They caught the tip, returned it to the one. Could get the end zone. Had to settle for three as Georgia's defense has played very well, Z, throughout the first half, holding Missouri to only one rushing yard in the first half, but yet Georgia trails by three. Yeah, on that last drive, a couple of big passes that Drew Locke hit that uh, boosted his numbers, but allowed them to get down the football field and get three more points on the board. The first three, most definitely a gift. Really, I think the answer right now is Georgia dominating this football game uh, in time of possession. Uh, They're moving the football well uh, in between the 20s right now, just not able to to either convert in some critical situations uh, or put points on the board. And somehow we've got to figure out an answer to that. But what you do like if you're Georgia is we're – It feels like we're dominating the football game right now, just not doing it on the scoreboard. But if we can get a quick stop here, get good field position, uh, and see if we get that offense cranking, could be a different story here in the second half. Dogs had an opportunity, tried to build some momentum uh, after a field goal score in the first half. Uh, They tried an onside kick, and it would have been executed perfectly had not the ball died at about the nine-and-a-half yard mark. It's got to go ten or be touched by the uh, the opposing team before Georgia can jump on it. But Marshall Morgan just stood on top of the football and watched it die shy of the 10-yard the minimum. And Missouri took over at our 45-yard line. Here's the kick by Morgan to get the second half underway from right to left. This one's going to come down on about the three-yard line to Missouri. And up the near sideline and upended at the 16-yard line. Natrez Patrick just uh, clobbered his man. 
That was John Gibson, the defensive back, reserve DB, returning that kick to the 16-yard line. And Georgia's defense, again, well, they'll spot it on the 17, actually, so that's where Missouri will start. The Dogs' defense has played very well, and we're minus Jordan Jenkins tonight. Remember that. One of our best players is not uh, able to go tonight due to an injury. Missouri on its own 17. We get the second half started. They lead 6-3. to three. Drew Locke, the freshman, starting his third game, going to run option to the left. He pitches to Hansbro, splits two defenders, gets across the 20 to about the 22-yard line before we stack him up with Jonathan Abram and Davin Bellamy. Uh, Locke really stretched it out as far as he could go. Then he made the pitch to Hansbro, and it was a profitable one. He got about five yards on the play to the 22. Still pretty good pursuit there by... The Georgia defense, and you're right, Locke stretched it out as far as he could go, pitched it right at the, the last second, but a number of dogs in position there to make a play. That five-yard gain, their longest run of the night. Here's Locke, chased out of the pocket, rolls to the left, and throws it out of bounds. Incomplete, trying to go to Sean Culkin, who was tight roping the sideline, and Locke got in trouble and just had to get rid of the football on the far side of the field. Was chased out by Tim Kimbrough, the linebacker. No, was uh, at, at, yeah, actually, Tim Kimbrough came through and will be Hansborough's worst nightmare for the rest of the season. He just bowled right over him. And Sterling Bailey, I think, is the one that finally chased him out of bounds. Third and five for the Tigers from their own 22. They're trying to move to our right. They'll run it with Hansborough straight ahead. Not a lot of space there created by that veteran Tiger offensive line. They couldn't open up enough hole for Hansbro to get the first down. He stopped at the 26. And it'll be fourth and a yard to go. Deloach and Gainis clogging the hole for the Georgia defense. Well, another great series there for the Georgia defense. Exactly what we needed to have dialed up. We're going to get this football. Should get this football anyway. With pretty good field position. Reggie Davis, the deep man back for Georgia. Here's for Tony's punt. Wow. Oh, wow. My goodness. Since Davis back to the 17. He makes one move. And that's about it as they bring him down at the 21 or the 22-yard line. A beautiful 56-yard punt. Long hanging spiral and only a three-yard return. But Tony's quite the weapon as he flips the field. The dogs will have the ball right around our own 22-yard line, trailing 6-3. to three. Scana Energy is a proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the Bulldogs score, Scana Energy will make a $500 donation to the University of Georgia General Scholarship Fund. For, well, for Tony, only a freshman and just may have missed that one a little bit. It was 56, not 58, like he crushed earlier. <laughs> Dogs will run it with Sony Michelle finding some running room. Oh, they just trip him up around the 25, and he falls forward still to the 30. Ian Simon got enough of Sony's leg to knock him off balance. He got five more yards after that, and a quick eight-yard burst for Sony. That's going to give him uh, over 40 for the night on his 11th carry, and it's going to be second down and two from the Dogs' 30. Little inside counter play. Great kick out block there by Jeb Blazevich. Here's Sony again. Patiently trying to wait for the hole to open. It opens just a little bit, but then closes quickly by white shirts as Michelle gets, I think he got the first down. Looks like they're going to spot it around the 33-yard line. He did. He got three yards, and they moved the sticks. First and 10, Georgia from our 33. Yeah, picking up right where we left off. Again, a lot of first down so far, controlling the game clock. Got to take this. Need big first down plays or solid first down plays really get us into second medium, second and short situations where we've got the entire playbook much better today than we've been. Play fake to Sony. Lambert going to go deep down the far sideline. Intended receiver Malcolm Mitchell is broken up at the Tiger 40 by Arian Penton. Boy, the He's crowd. Very, uh, yeah, they wanted some interference there, didn't they? Uh, and, and I'm surprised that nothing came out. Penton was was all over him, grabbing onto him far before the ball got there. Actually had one of Malcolm's arms and kind of yanked it down. I can't believe a flag didn't come out there. We haven't had one all night on the pass interference, I don't believe. In fact, very few penalties in the ball game. There's only been one, and it was a five-yard penalty on Georgia that was accepted anyway. Missouri's yet to be penalized. Second down and 10 for the Dogs from our 33-yard line. Play clock down to three. Lambert back in the gun. 
snap. Lambert looks with time, throws it over the middle. It is caught by Godwin coming across from right to left. Makes the catch at the 37. That's where he's tackled by the linebacker, Michael Shear, out of St. Louis, Missouri. It's a pickup of about five to the 37. 37 and a half, maybe. Let's call it a four-yard gain instead. And it'll be third down and six. Tigers drop back into cover two there. Godwin was a third option on that route, just a short, shallow crossing route that Grayson was forced to go to. Brendan Douglas is in. Georgia five for nine on third down so far in the ballgame. They stick Douglas out as a receiver and go empty. Lambert going to throw it to the near side, threw it over two guys, incomplete. Trying to go to Godwin. And he had Towns, I believe, in the area as well. And it goes into the Georgia sideline, and it's incomplete. Well, we had Towns outside trying to get an outside release and run an out route, but he actually ended up going inside, which got the cornerback for Missouri's vision in on that play to where he could now go attack the quick out route that we were trying to connect on. Colin Barber's on to punt it. Cam Hilton is back deep to receive it. Barber's punt. Not too far, but going to get a good roll for Georgia. It may have touched Missouri. At least Georgia thinks it did. Georgia jumps on the football. Did it touch a Missouri player? No, no indication. The field judge says it's Tiger football. Georgia jumped on it like it hit one of the Missouri players. We jumped on it in a hurry. I think Roquan Smith recovered it. And we'll see if uh, if that play is going to be reviewed by uh, John McDade and his officiating crew. It's a 39-yard punt. No return. Ball on the 24 of the Tigers and a TV timeout. So maybe it'll be sorted out during the break, if at all. 6-3, to three, Missouri leading Georgia. 11.25 to go. Third quarter here in Athens. We're back in a moment on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Well, the play was reviewed, but it was upheld on the original call. It's Missouri's ball. Here's Hansbro starting left. Georgia chases him back to the other direction, and he'll run out of bounds on the Georgia sideline. After about a three-yard gain, he was uh, he had to reverse his field because Leonard Floyd was going to drop him for a loss. No, it was Trent Thompson. Excuse me. Floyd chased him out of bounds on the near sideline. Thompson is the guy that caused him to come this way, but he did get uh, to the 28-yard line, a gain of four. Well, that play was reviewed on the uh, on the punt, and it was brought to you by Barbasol, close shave Bulldogs, close shave Barbasol. Second down, now in six for the Tigers from their own 28-yard line. Six to three, they lead Georgia. Here comes pressure. Locke rolls out of the pocket to his left, being chased by Bellamy. He'll fire it up the sideline, and it is going to be incomplete, trying to get it to Jamon Moore, a redshirt sophomore receiver from Missouri City, Texas. But instead, it'll bring up third down and six after the incomplete pass. Great burst up the middle there by Sterling Bailey. Forced Locke out of the pocket immediately. There's nothing that he could do. Locke had to start getting on his horse before he even got to the top of his drop. Tigers 2 of 8 on third down. They've got three receivers left. Deafening noise at Sanford Stadium. They work from the near hash moving to our right. Locke back being chased. Floyd got a hand on him. He pulls away. Locke rolling up the near sideline. Throws on the run. And it's batted up in the air. Picked off, I think. But he, I think the quarterback, Locke, was out of bounds. I think he stepped out of bounds. Back up on the other end of the field at the 25 before he chunked it. I don't know if Georgia caught the ball in in bounds on the pass play because I was blocked out by the sideline. But Locke stepped out of bounds, says the official, so it's a moot point anyway. Stepped out of bounds prior to throwing the pass. Fourth down. Fourth down, ball on the 25. Jonathan Abram caught it on the other end of the play on the throw by Locke, but it was didn't matter at that point because uh, John McDade said Locke stepped out of bounds at the 25. It's fourth and nine for the Tigers. Boy, again, though, great pressure there. Leonard Floyd initially. Then you had Davin Bellamy. Jake Gaines was in pursuit. Lorenzo Carter in it as well. 
Here's Godwin on the punt return. Catches it at the 36 up the far hash. And close to midfield. Nice return by Godwin. Uh, Fatoni's punt was a little bit flat that time. He didn't get nearly the loft that he's been getting this entire ball game. And Georgia will return it close to midfield. Only a 38-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Dogs ball at our 49. Timeout with 10.15 to go. Quarter number three. It's Missouri 6, Georgia 3. Back after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Missouri leading Georgia, 10-15 to go third quarter. Georgia scores and gets the job done just like the Toyota Tundra with its bold, chiseled body. Toyota, let's go places. Dogs start on their own 49. And Jay Black tells me this is our best starting field position of the night, so we need to take advantage of that, trailing by three here in the third quarter. Grayson Lambert, 14 out of 22, 136 Yards on the night. He does have the one interceptions. Had a couple that he's thrown that probably could have been picked off, and lucky that they weren't. Start in the eye. Sony Michelle, the tailback. He'll take the handoff, run straight ahead. Bounces off one man, Shearer, and then into Tiger territory at the 42 yard line. Going to be a gain of eight, maybe, as Arian Pinton had to bring down the muscular Sony Michelle in the secondary. They bring the ball back almost just inside the 45. Looked like he got about a, another yard and a half on that carry, but they spot it back just inside the 44-yard line of the Tigers. And they'll call it second down about two and a half. Hand off again. Sony Michelle dances in the backfield looking for a seam. Finds a hole. Here comes the flag in from the back judge. Well, that's from the center judge, actually. And Michelle tackled at the 35-yard line. Number 71 offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. And they got Theus for a hold. Dog's second penalty of the night. Missouri is yet to be penalized. And that'll wipe out a first down run and a gain of uh, about seven or eight yards for Sony Michelle. Hicks comes out of the ball game. Towns will come in. We'll bring in an extra receiver, swap out the fullback. That puts the ball back on our side of the 50. Back at the 46-yard line. Yeah, costly penalty there. These, these are the situations over the past couple of weeks. Dogs have really struggled in second and long, third and long situations. Second and 13. Here we go empty. Sonny Michelle in the slot to the right. Lambert back to pass out of the shotgun. Being chased once to the right and throws, and it is caught by Malcolm Mitchell in traffic at the 45-yard line of the Tigers. Sheryls and Wilson, safety men, make the tackle for the Missouri defense as Mitchell got about seven or eight of that back. And now it'll be third down and four to go from the 45 of Missouri. Boy, Grayson showing off his arm on that one. Had to scramble and move out of the pocket and was going hard to his right through that back across his body as Malcolm Mitchell was coming back down the stem on a scramble drill and Grayson able to fire a bullet in there. They need four for a first down. Lambert being chased, throws it out, dumps it off to the right to Sony Michelle. He makes the catch, can't get by a defender, bounces off one, but then another white shirt will bring him down shy of the first down at the 43-yard line. And it's going to bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs as Ian Simon was able to save the Tiger defense and force George into a punting situation. Boy, in this part of the field, this is where we went for it earlier in the game. We've already tried an onside kick that didn't quite get the 10 yards. So unsuccessful there, but knowing how well the defense is playing, we'll see if anything happens. It's Barber to kick it for the Bulldogs, trying to pooch it deep. He does so. Hilton, I think, makes the catch. Yep, that was Cam Hilton back deep. The fair catch inside the 10, a 35-yard pooch punt with a lot of backspin on it, and Hilton makes the grab at the 8. That's where the Tigers will have the ball. 7.51 to go third quarter. Missouri still leading Georgia 6-3. to We're back after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Tigers backed up on their own eight-yard line after the fourth punt of the night by Colin Barber. First and ten on their own eight. They're trying to move 
Off their own goal line to our right. Snap it to Locke in the shotgun. They'll throw it out into the near flat, and it's incomplete. Threw it out of the reach of uh, Cam Hilton, a freshman from St. Louis. He went to the turf trying to make the grab, but off his hands and incomplete. It'll be second and ten from the Tiger 8. Yeah, that's just one that Drew Locke has got to complete every time he throws it. little bubble screen to the outside, as easy a pass as you can get, and was about four yards off target. Second down and eight. Second down and ten from the eight for the Tigers. Here's Locke going to throw it out of the pocket. He had a man on a go route streaming downfield. That was Emmanuel Hall, a speedy freshman from Franklin, Tennessee. He passes incomplete as the throw was over the head of the intended target. We had two men back there in coverage anyway. Yeah, typically you throw that pass with a little bit of air underneath it, but Hall got an inside release, and we had a safety coming up, uh, coming over the top, closing the distance pretty quickly, so Locke trying to throw that one in on the line, just overshot his target. Third and ten from the eight. Three men with a hand on the ground. We bring three. Locke will throw it, and it is caught, and Hall is busted, and it's incomplete, I think. And now here comes a flag. Dominic Sanders... Laid the hit. Now there's a flag right at the point of impact there. Are they going to call a targeting? Well, I, I, no way that that angle. Personal foul, targeting. Yep. Number 24, the defense. Well, they'll have to look at it. Referee who threw that flag didn't have the, the best angle there. It's almost any time you get a big shot on a receiver that is not looking for it and a little bit exposed that target is going to come out in real time action didn't look like it was was a targeting we'll see on the the replay if he got him with his head it looked up high and uh, we'll get a better angle as we look at this replay there was definitely helmet to helmet boy it looked like he was trying to go in with his shoulder too and his head just clipped him and it, it after video review yeah. the ruling on the field is confirmed that's the quick yard penalty will be enforced. Yeah, dominic sanders is, disqualified for the remainder of the game. is ejected from the game or disqualified in the words of john mcdade the referee so we're without our uh, starting safety now and briscoe and abram are in the secondary for georgia and parish that review brought to you by barbasol close shave bulldogs close shave Barbasol, and the thing is, uh, on a third and ten again from the eight-yard line, like before when they had third and ten from the ten, Tigers catch a break on a 15-yard Georgia penalty, and it's an automatic first down for the Tigers at their own 23 now. So new life for the Missouri offense. Four receivers set, locking the shotgun. There's the snap, drops back in the pocket will throw he airmailed that one trying to go out wide to the left to sean colk in the tight end who's back for the first time in a couple of games the pass is incomplete as leonard floyd laid a good lick on the quarterback lock as he was releasing let's check in with chuck on the sidelines cook's pest control sideline report chuck scott brian gant just led uh, dominic sanders into the locker room the young man with his head down totally depressed just felt like he was trying to make a good football play Here's the handoff for the Tigers. They'll run it straight up the gut. Hansbro, the senior from Arlington, Texas, runs into Trent Thompson. A few yards downfield. We'll bring up third down as Thompson makes the tackle around the 27, 28 yard line. And now we've got uh, an official timeout because Missouri Hansbro is injured. He looked like he was trying to get to the sidelines. He's back behind the rest of his teammates and just went down on the turf. He's had some ankle problems the last few weeks and has played sparingly. Now he's up and hobbling and a little bit of assistance. He's walking to the Missouri sideline. And Hansbro will be out of the ball game at least on this play and they'll get uh, I think they're gonna get Ish Witter back in now the 510 sophomore running back from Tampa Florida will come into the contest on third down and about six yards to go ball just shy of the Tigers 28 yard line Missouri's two out of nine on third down this evening let's make it two for ten we'll see snap to lock here comes pressure they chase him and he'll throw it to Witter trying to set up a screen it's incomplete we got a terrific pass rush from James Deloach, the senior from Millen, Georgia, who forced that early throw by Locke. He was off target, trying to go to the screen to Witter. Never had a chance with the pass rush. 
by James Deloach. For the defensive push that our defensive line is getting right now, making it very tough for Missouri to do anything on the offensive side of the ball, especially when they can't get their running game going. Only five yards total on the ground tonight. To Tony with the punt. Godwin is the receiver to return. It calls for a fair catch. Moves to his right. Catches it on the number at the 30-yard line. That's the fifth punt of the night for Corey Fatoni. Prior to that kick, was averaging 46 yards per punt along a 59 tonight. That one, 42. And it forces Godwin to make the fair catch at the 30. It'll be the dog's ball with 6.45 to go in the third quarter. A TV timeout, but we'll keep it right here with Missouri leading by a score of 6 to 3. Just three field goals in tonight's contest. And we'll... We'll take this moment to enjoy Tony Schiavone on the big video board doing the Name That Tune bit. Brought to you by State Farm. Tony's actually <laughs> Tony actually saying. <laughs> Could you hear that, Cab, back in the studio? Oh, my God. That's Tony, the, that's Tony the... behind us, he's actually covering his face for the first time ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Big Tone cover his face. Oh. But he did. if you didn't know, that was the uh, Bon Jovi hit, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive. That was the uh, Name That Tune on the video board. And, of course, everybody well, I, in the stadium I would, I would figure make, that out. Yeah, I would make fun of that, except mine is upcoming. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be quiet. Yeah, don't let the cat out of the bag as far as what song you're singing. Oh, that was good stuff. And you hear the roar of the crowd after that. That, that was priceless. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. We need that on tape over. And that needs to be a, a daily or a game ritual now is that we play that before every game. Dog fans, on to something different now. GeorgiaDogs.com <laughs> is your first and best source for Bulldog news, scores, highlights, interviews, and behind-the-scenes video. You can also buy authentic dogs gear in the G-Shop or bid against other Bulldog fans in the exclusive online auctions. Visit GeorgiaDogs.com today. It'll be the dog's ball when uh, play resumes. Georgia will have it first and 10 at the 30. You just kind of keep, well, I mean, we got 6.45 to go in the third. We're down three. It's 6-3. to three. But from at least from my perspective, I just keep waiting for something good to happen for Georgia. Our defense is playing very well. Missouri's offense has really not shown any consistency in moving the football. But I guess you could say the same thing about, about Georgia. If you're a Missouri fan, dogs haven't been able to get in the end zone. But I feel like they will at some point. Uh, you, you really do. Uh, you know, offensively, we're moving the ball better than what they're doing on the offensive side of uh, or, or the, what their offense is doing. Our, our defense is playing lights out. It, it's turning into a field possession game. Uh, somehow we've got to find a way, though, uh, to, to get more than one or two first downs, push this into their territory, get some points on the board. But, uh, you know, with some of the creases that our O-line is opening up right now, you, you feel like we're close to breaking one. Uh, but this Missouri team, they haven't given them up all year, haven't given them up tonight either. Just tough, uh, tough to get the football down the field in big chunks. Five punts so far here in the second half. That's it. Sony Michelle out of the eye. Takes the handoff, runs straight into a wall of white shirts. They pile them up and try to rake the ball out, but to no avail. They'll whistle the play dead at the line of scrimmage at the 30. And uh, take your pick on who made the stop. Augusta was in there. Uh, looked like Hatley was in there. Yeah, all the defensive uh, front and linebackers uh, in there piling up uh, that line of scrimmage. And it's second down and 10 now for the Bulldogs from our 30. Go back into the shotgun. Michelle offset to Lambert's right. Snap to Lambert. He'll throw it into the right flat. Caught by Sonny Michelle. They grab his leg and pull him to the turf. As the uh, tackle was made by Marcel Frazier, the reserve defensive end. On the far side of the field, that's going to be a lost yardage play. Back at the 27-yard line, a loss of three. Now it's third and 13. And this has kind of been our no-man's land this season in third and long. It, it really has. And first time tonight, Missouri actually brought a free safety blitz and, and came with a linebacker blitz as well. So Grayson had to get rid of that football, but nice coverage behind it. Lambert's going to be sacked now. The pocket totally collapsed. Missouri brought three guys, and they all three got there. Charles Harris leading the charge for Missouri. They sack Lambert back on the 17-yard line, a loss of 10. And for Harris, his fifth sack of the year. 
Another tackle for loss. He leads the SEC in that department, by the way. Had almost 12 coming into the ballgame. And the guy on the other end, Walter Brady, is the sack leader on the team. He's got six, which is second in the SEC. So they get to the quarterback quite a bit. They backed us up. Barber will be receiving the snap to kick it away for Georgia from our three-yard line. Here they come. Barber gets off a boomer. High hanging kick. Going to come down at the 45. The ball is out. The receiver was hit. The ball is out. Who recovered it? Georgia has the football. Boy, in a game that has just been back and forth, dominated by defenses, that might be just what the doctor ordered there. Great special teams play. Hilton didn't call for a fair catch. He was hit shortly after the ball hit him. Malcolm Mitchell is the guy that forced the punt, making the tackle. The ball came out. And Georgia has recovered the football at the Missouri 43-yard line. Let's hope that kick starts our offense. The kick was muffed by the receiver foot on the ground where the kickers fell on it. First down, kicking team. Let's go down to the sidelines. Chuck Dowdle, Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck? You know, you spend enough time down here on the sideline, you start to kind of sense the mood. And the mood down here for the longest time tonight has been just that feeling that they're waiting to erupt if just something good would happen. Maybe this is it, Scott. Let's see if we can capitalize on this. Get a touchdown on the scoreboard. Malcolm Parrish recovered the loose ball for the Bulldogs. Georgia ball, first and ten on the Tiger 43. Here we go. Keith Marshall in. Big hole at right tackle for Keith. Downfield, down close to the 30. Shearer, the linebacker, had to tackle him 13 yards, make it 12 yards downfield at the 31. It's a first down for the Dogs at the Tiger 31-yard line. Just running right behind big Greg Pike, who got up to the second level. Huge hole there for Keith Marshall to run through. Three receivers left. That's the near side. And Lambert in the shotgun. Play fake to Marshall. Wants to throw. Quick pass to the tight end. Blazevich, he makes the catch at the 25-yard line. Well-designed play there. You fake the handoff this time to Marshall. You move the inside linebacker just a little bit to allow Jeb Blazevich a nice little soft part of the zone to sit into. And that time we hit him. Eight-yard gain. Newsom, the linebacker. Sherrill's the safety on the stop. Second down and short for the Dogs. Quick throw out to the right to Malcolm Mitchell, trying to set up a screen. Godwin couldn't keep his block. Mitchell makes the catch, but he's going to be tackled for a loss by Arian Penton, who played it well. He fought off a block and made the tackle on the same play back at the 26. We lost three yards trying to set up that screen out to the right. Boy, Scott, if we could have got that block there, Malcolm could have gotten outside. Could have been a nice game. We caught Missouri again in a free safety blitz. It's the second time they brought it in the second down situation, but good individual effort out there by Missouri. Third and four and a half for the dogs. Brendan Douglas in. Going to hand it to Brendan Douglas, the junior out of Augusta, and he's going to plow forward close to the first down. He may have gotten it. I think he did to the 20. He got it. Brendan Douglas with some good hard inside running between the tackles. Forces that football inside the 21, close to the 20. It's a first down, Georgia, just outside the Tiger 20-yard line. Had Isaiah Wynn, left guard, pull on that play for the kickout block, and a good push up front by Cablano and Pike. Under center, Douglas, the lone tailback, takes the handoff, runs straight up the gut again, right behind the center and guard, and Douglas explodes down to the 13, tackled in the secondary by Anthony Sherrills from Missouri. Well, we're going tempo right now. We've got them back on their heels, and the big offensive line taking over on this drive. Seven-yard gain, second and three. Under center is Lambert, Douglas, the lone setback, going to get another try. Douglas inside, breaks through the line of scrimmage, he's down to the five. He was dragging a man the last yard and a half. Donovan Newsom drug him to the five-yard line. It's first and goal, Dogs, just outside the Tiger five. They can smell that end zone for the first time tonight. Boy, can they ever in that offensive line. Is the engine making us go right now? Eight-yard gain by Douglas. He's given us a burst. We'll throw it out to the near side. Malcolm Mitchell going to be dropped for a loss again on that screen. And again, Godwin couldn't fight to hold his block. Kenya Dennis, the cornerback, fights through the blocker and tackles Malcolm Mitchell for a loss back to the 10, minus four on that play. Boy, well, we've got what we want outside, one-on-one, but it's critical that we get that initial block so 
Malcolm can get outside and then be one-on-one. -on -one. You make one person miss, you're in the end zone, but a big loss of yardage there. Second goal back on the 10 now. Sony Michelle in there at the eye. They'll toss it to Sony. Starts right, cuts in at the hash. Downfield back close to the original line of scrimmage, back close to the six. Tackled by Charles Harris, the redshirt sophomore defensive end for Missouri. They'll substitute a couple of defensive players in. The ball's on the seven. Now it's third and goal from there. Boy, we were rolling on the six with Brendan Douglas running the football and then a lost yardage play has knocked us off track temporarily. It's third and goal from the Tiger seven. Three receivers to the near side. Michelle now sprints out to the right edge. We go empty set with five receivers in. Lambert in the gun. Play clock down to four. There's the snap. Lambert looks left the entire way. Now we'll throw it towards the middle of the end zone, and it's picked off, I think, a diving interception into double coverage at the two-yard line. We don't even get a three out of it. Trying to go to Blazevich. Anthony Sherrills went to the turf and intercepted the pass of Grayson Lambert, his second interception tonight, and the drive is halted. Little combo coverage there on the inside that was on Jeb Blazevich. I don't think Grayson saw it, and Grayson went late to Blazevich on that. They were man-to-man -man across the board, but comboed on our inside receiver. Lambert kind of drifted back a little bit, trying to buy some time, threw it off of his back foot. And the ruling on the field in the previous play is an interception by the defense. This play is now under video review. We're looking at a replay. Sherrill's caught it in his left arm. And when he went to the turf, it looked like it got a lot of the ground, and it looked like the ground helped him maintain the possession. So we'll see. The replay official is John Bible. They're taking a look at this. So Georgia may get another crack at it if they overrule the original call, which was an interception for Missouri. So they're looking at it in the booth, and that will give us a time to tell you that Georgia fans are number one. That's why they deserve a close, comfortable shave with America's number one shaving cream, Barbasol, Close Shave Bulldogs, Close Shave Barbasol, as they sponsor this official review. And everybody looks at it on the big board. And that ball definitely topples over it his moves. left forearm and touches the turf. He had his arm on it, but it didn't look like he controlled it when he went to the ground. It looked like the ball did indeed touch the ground and allowed him to maintain possession. Boy, give Blazevich some credit there, too. He was able to get his hand in and make that interception attempt a little bit more difficult. But you're, you're right, Scott. Coming down to the ground, that ball definitely moved when he hit the ground. Again, our official John McDade. Now, here's his announcement. After video review, it is not an interception. The receiver was not able to maintain the direction of the ball prior to the ball hitting the ground. The ball will be placed in the seven yard line. It will be fourth and goal. Fourth and goal at the seven. We'll send on the field goal. I've never heard that much applause for a field goal try. Let's go down to Chuck uh, on the uh, sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report, Chuck. Well, the feeling down here among the staff was that that, that very thing, that, 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 that right hand, and he was trying to save it with that right hand, and he wasn't able to do it. And that ball, like you pointed out, touched the turf, and that's why they ruled it incomplete. All right, Chuck, we're going to try a 25-yard field goal from the far hash, kicking left with Marshall Morgan. He has one tonight, trying to make it a tie ball game. There's the snap in the hole. The kick is high and end over in and in the air, and it is into the net. Good. And the battle of field goals and field position continues. It's Georgia 6 and Missouri 6 now with 33 seconds to go in quarter number 3 on the 24-yard field goal by Marshall Morgan. That was a 10-play drive, 36 yards, took 4-11 off the clock after the muffed punt by Missouri. That was recovered by Malcolm Parrish for Georgia. And the field goal seals the drive, a 24-yard boot for three. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. And with Marshall Morgan's second field goal of the night, that's another All-State good hands field goal. And with that kick, Walton Gass is kicking it for charity and donating another $500 to local charities. Walton Gass, Georgia proud. 6-6 Six -six ball game, final seconds of the third quarter. Let's pause for station identification. You're listening to the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Only 33 seconds remain in the quarter. Battle of field goals. 
Well, well, Missouri's defense is certainly living up to its reputation, but Georgia's having a heck of a defensive game as well tonight, see? Yeah, that we are defensively doing everything and more that, it, that you could ask for. You feel like we're in control of the game there. Very fortunate uh, on that last pass that Blazevich is able to get his hand in there and uh, just create enough interference for that interception not to take place. That football ill-advised ever, ever to have been thrown. Grayson came to him very, very late in his progression, was having to give ground when he threw that football, and uh, never really a chance for Blazevich to catch it. He had to go play defender right away, but uh, we catch a Catch a break there, interception wiped off the board. We do get this thing tied up, and the way the defense is playing, you've got to feel pretty good about at least being tied right now. Marshall Morgan's kick for Georgia from right to left. Going to come down on the 5 to Gibson, to the 10, to the 15. Stop there. There's a flag. He's tackled at the 30, at the, uh, make it the 14-yard uh, line or so. Ryan Rankin. Made the stop, and he's the return, pretty darn excited about it. Number five, the receiving team. The goal, right? And the first penalty of the night against Missouri. He's going to back him up with a block in the back. Ben Souther in on the stop as well, along with Rankin on special teams. So the Tigers going to be backed up. Georgia football is powered by Georgia Power, as it is each and every week. They'll mark off the penalty, put the ball down around the seven. And that's where the Tigers will start, and they've had a tough time, as uh, Jay Black tells me, 23 drives without a touchdown against Georgia now, and that's going back to last year, I assume, <laughs> in a 34 to nothing victory. And they don't have a touchdown tonight, but neither does Georgia. It's a 6-6 ball game with 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. Tigers on their own seven-yard line. First and ten. Two receivers left and right. They send a man in motion. That's the tight end from right to left. They'll run it with Hansbro, who was shaken up earlier, now back in the ball game. Leonard Floyd wraps him up at the 10, tries to strip out the football, but no success there, but he does have success in stopping Hansbro at the 10-yard line, a gain of three, and it'll be second down and seven for the Tigers, and that may be the final play of the quarter. Boy, Leonard Floyd having himself a day right now. Been in the backfield almost all day long, putting pressure on Drew Locke. That is the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go, four fingers in the air all around Sanford Stadium. It is Georgia 6 and Missouri 6. Tigers ball as they continue on this possession as we go to the fourth after this timeout on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Time for a Comcast Business scoreboard update. Comcast built for business on a drive that saw Florida convert a fourth and one. They would score to tie it at 28 all. LSU and Florida, Justin Fournette, Leonard Fournette rather, driving on a 15-yard run just now. They're in the red zone is LSU. Again, tied at 28 midway through the fourth quarter. And also Notre Dame trailing USC at home 31 to 24. Scott? Wow. All right, Cap, thanks very much. Definitely some uh, big games going on around the country, and this one's its not uh, quite as offensive or offensive, depending on your point of view, as those other games. It's 6-6 here, Georgia and Missouri, as we go to the fourth quarter. Visit Flash Foods for your fuel and tailgating needs and download the Flash Foods mobile app to find the store nearest you. Let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck? Well, what's interesting, you know, you're given that score, that uh, LSU-Florida score that we're getting uh, from Capital, and, and what's interesting is not only are they not showing any highlights of that game on the board here, they're not including that score up on the scoreboard whatsoever. It's like they don't even want these Georgia Bulldogs even looking at that. No distractions. Well, got to take care of business here. It's second down for the Tigers. They're on their own 10-yard line. They slide the tight end from in motion to the near side. Play fake. Locke's going to roll to the right, throw off his back foot. It's caught by Brown at the 24, and then he's driven into the turf by Quincy Mauger, the safety. But it's a positive gain downfield and a big first down for Missouri all the way out to the 28. Got 18 yards as they rolled Locke out to the right, and they had success with it. And it's a good thing they did. We brought both linebackers middle linebackers there right over the center and again broke the line of scrimmage but the change of launch point bought him enough time first and 10 from the 28 handoff witter ish gets squished by bailey and kimbrough on the inside 
at the 28-yard line. Ish Witter. No match for our big guys up front. No gain on the play. It's second down and 10 from the 28. Trenton Thompson also got a piece of that. Boy, you talk about squish. Thompson at 310 and Ish at 190. It's almost another whole person. That's most definitely the call of the game, Scott. I love it. Locks back in the shotgun. There's the snap. Pump fake to the right. Steps up in the middle. Bellamy chases him down before he could get out of the pocket at the 26. That's a sack for Davin Bellamy, the redshirt sophomore from Shambly. That's our second sack of the game. Back on the 27. Loss of a yard, third down and 11 for the Tigers. Boy, if Locks is back in the pocket and that doesn't change his launch point, get on the move, just nothing he could do. The Georgia defensive line having one heck of a ball game. Crowd jacked up on this third down attempt by Missouri. Third and 11 for the Tigers on their own 27. There's the snap to Lock. They'll run a draw play with Ish. Breaks away from one tackle. Carter trying to get him. Man, he finally trips him up around the 35-yard line, shy of the first down, but it was close. Too close for comfort. Quincy Mauger stopped him at the end as uh, Lorenzo Carter was chasing him downfield. Jake Gaines came in on the quarterback. Oh, he had he had uh, Witter in the backfield, but he pulled away from Gaines. Witter did, and he almost got the first down, but he's about a yard and a half, two yards short. It's fourth down and a couple. Ball just across the Tiger 36-yard line. They'll sit on the punt team and Corey Fatoni as they continue to play field position. Terry Godwin will be our deep receiver on the punt. A quick snap, and he got off a of beauty. There's a flag down, and we may have motion as uh, Missouri really got up to the line of scrimmage and went quickly with the punt, but they were moving. False start on the Tigers. They'll back them up five yards. Boy, in this game, every every yard you could get is helpful, so not, not a real good punt there. We had our defense on the field thinking they might try something tricky. They didn't. They did end up kicking it, but now we'll put our uh, punt return team on the field. After the five-yard penalty and the ball back inside their 32-yard line. So Fatoni, who's had a banner night kicking the football for the Tigers, fields a low snap, gets off another boomer. Long, wobbly spiral, caught by Godwin at the 24. Makes one man miss at the 30, cuts to the outside left. Gives a man a stiff arm. They'll chase him into the bench on the far side of the field at the 42, maybe the 43-yard line. Nice return by the freshman Terry Godwin from Hogansville. Good long punt by Fatoni, but uh, Godwin made it pay with a return. A 44-yard kick and an 18-yard return. Not bad. Dogs with good field position at our own 43. Timeout with 12-16 remaining in the game. George and Missouri tied at six on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Fourth quarter score, 6-6, Georgia and Missouri. Do you know someone who makes an impact on their community? Team UGA, presented by Georgia Power, is now accepting nominations for members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude. You can submit your nominations at georgiadogs.com. Dogs ball, first and ten on our 43. We'll run it with Brendan Douglas. Douglas had success earlier in a uh, field goal producing drive for the Bulldogs. Not a lot of space this time as he tries to run between the guards on that far hash moving to the right, but he's slowed down by the tackling machine known as Kentrell Brothers, the linebacker. Well into double digits tackles tonight as Brendan gets about a half a yard on that play. Nose of the ball, not quite to the 44-yard line. Second down and nine for the Dogs. Yeah, eight carries, 23 yards on the day for for Brendan, that last series uh, really started to get it uh, get it rolling on the ground. A dozen tackles on the night for Brothers. Here's Douglas again, running straight ahead. This time to the 45. He got a, another yard out of it before Missouri shuts it down. Right on the edge of the G. This time it's uh, Walter Brady, the redshirt freshman defensive end out of Florence, Alabama, that makes the stop. Now it's third and eight for Georgia from our 45. Dogs spent a lot of time this week, just extra prep time on third down. Coming into the game, we were 29%. On our third down conversion tonight, so far 6 out of 14, so much better 
in that area. Boy, it'd be nice to get this one, too. Towns, Godwin, and Mitchell in as the receivers. Blazevich in it tight end on the right, and Douglas. The lone setback. Play clock down to two, down to one. Lambert will call a time before the delay penalty. With 10.50 remaining in the ball game, at least in regulation, in a 6-6 contest. Well, didn't, just didn't like the defensive look that Missouri was giving us and thought about changing the play, but clock was just running out too much. Good awareness to get that timeout call. All right, we'll call the timeout as well. 6-6, Georgia and Missouri, third down coming up for the Dogs when we come back on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Dog fans, did you know the StubHub app is personalized just for you? Now with the StubHub app, you can select your favorite teams and artists and discover new ones, too. Start at StubHub and let the fun find you. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of Georgia Athletics. Third down and eight from our 45 for the Dogs. Lambert out of the gun. Pump fakes will throw it off to the right. It's caught by Godwin in Tiger territory. He gets the first down at the 45, and they twist him back, and the play's blown dead right there. John Gibson had him around the waist twisting and trying to toss the freshman back but it was too late he'd already gotten the first down at the tiger 45 yard line a gain of 10 great read there by grayson lambert the tigers changed their defensive look right at the snap of the football grayson recognized it went to exactly the right guy two receivers to the left we work on the near hash run it with sony sony hit at the 48 no make it the 43 excuse me and Driven back there. They give him a couple of yards. There's Kentrell Brothers. Now has a Baker's dozen in tackles for the uh, Missouri Tigers. A 6'1 senior from Guthrie, Oklahoma. Stops Michelle after a two-yard pickup. Second down and eight from the uh, Tiger 43-yard line. And we are inching our way to that 100-yard mark now with 93 yards total on the ground. It's hard to break a long one with these guys because they always play somebody deep. And they tackle pretty well. Here's Sony to the right side, trying to cut downfield at the 41. They pile it up around the 39-yard line. Sony had some blocking with Pike and Rome on the right side. And they stopped it just inside the 40-yard line. A gain of three for Michelle. It's going to bring up third down and five for the Bulldogs. Yeah, those three yards from Pike and Isaiah win as they got right behind Sony and just pushed the pile. 22 carries last week for Sony in Knoxville. He's got 16 tonight for 61 yards. But they've been subbing. Douglas has nine carries. Keith Marshall has four carries. Third down for the Dogs. Third and five, working on the near hash, moving to the right. Fourth quarter with 9.05 to go. Snap to Lambert, hand it off to Michelle, run it straight up the hash mark. And he got the first down with extra effort. He was hit at the 38, but kept turning, and he got the first down at the 35-yard line, a gain of five. Boy, and he left three Tigers with their head in their hands as he broke through a number of tackles there. Everybody in the stadium thought Sony was going to be down, but just kept driving those legs. First and 10, Georgia. Ball just inside the Tiger 35-yard line. We've got two men out to the left. Mitchell and Godwin run out of the eye. Sony's the tail. Hicks is the fullback. Toss it to Michelle. Runs behind the block from the fullback and off the left side behind Theus and Wynn. And he cuts up inside to the 31-yard line. He'll pick up four yards there and make it second down and six. Dogs going no huddle. Bach moving at 8.15. We're in the fourth quarter in a 6-6 ball game. And we're going no huddle, but we're not trying to go up-tempo here. Getting to the line of scrimmage, seeing what kind of looks Missouri's going to be in and really making calls at the line of scrimmage. Offset eye. Lambert under center will throw out to the left. Reaching catch by Malcolm Mitchell. They miss a tackle. Puts his hand on the ground at the 20. Fights for five and a half yards more on the far sideline. The student section right in front of that catch. Really liked that effort by the senior, Malcolm Mitchell. He would not go down. He put the hand on the turf for balance and got five more before Brothers tackled him at the 15. Boy, broke one tackle, man. Made another guy look foolish as he left him in the dirt. And then you're right, just kept battling. Just a three-step hitch. Grayson Lambert threw that football on time. Well executed. 16 yards and a first down, Georgia. Hand off Michelle. Looking for space off the right edge of the right tackle. Colton Houston is just not there. 
He did get uh, a little bit of positive yardage, maybe a yard to the 14. A gain of one, second down and nine. Clock moving at 7-12, 7-11. We're tied at six. It's just been a battle of field goals and punting and a lot of defense. Keith Marshall checks in. Some fresh legs for the Bulldogs. The junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Offset to Lambert's right in a shotgun. Four receivers set on second down and nine. Hand it to Keith with blocking to the left. Marshall fighting through the blocks and the tackles of uh, attempts of Missouri. And he gets the ball close to the 11. Charles Harris, a defensive end on that side, makes the stop. Ball right on the 11. Give Keith a gain of three. And it'll be a third down and six for the Bulldogs from the Tiger 11-yard line. Here comes Sony back in and Marshall out. We're going to be interesting to see what the dogs do here as well as we're playing defense. Do you take a chance and throw the football right now or do you keep it on the ground, maybe pick up the first down, but play safe and play into the strength of your defense? Third down from the Missouri 11. They hand it off to Sony. He bounces out to the left, fights off one tackle. They chase him to the sideline and slide out of bounds with him around the nine. Ian Simon, a safety. They stretch that play out to the short side of the field, and they get the dogs out of bounds on a fourth down now, coming up at the nine-yard line, three yards shy of the first down, and here comes another field goal try for Georgia. This to try to take the lead. Marshall Morgan tells Fatone Bauta, mark it right there on the 16-yard line on the far hash, kicking to our right. So just a slight angle for the senior kicker, Marshall Morgan. There's the snap and the hold. The kick is away, and it is no good. Oh, my goodness. Boy, nothing more than a chip shot right there. You did exactly what you needed to do on the offensive on that offensive drive, you ate up a bunch of clock, and he just pulled it. He missed the 26-yarder with a little bit of an angle on the far hash, just outside the left upright. And we remain tied at 6. 5.40 to go. Don't go away. Time out. Back in a moment. Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Georgia football powered by Georgia Power. Missouri ball on the 20-yard line after the 26-yard missed field goal by Georgia. So Marshall has two field goals and a miss. Missouri's Andrew Baggett has two field goals and a miss. Inside six minutes to go in the ball game. Quick throw to left, which is incomplete on the right hash. Broken up by our Juwan Briscoe was in on the play as well. Looked like it hit him in the arms, but he had two red shirts draped on him and unable to make the play. Briscoe did break it up, the freshman from Maryland. Yeah, good job there by Briscoe getting over the top of the receiver without making contact and swatting that football away. Second and 10 from the 20 for the Tigers. Lock out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Throw it to Hansbro out of the backfield. Abram comes up to make the tackle. He trips him enough for Kimbrough to come over and finish him at the 19-yard line. Abram upfield, tripped up Hansbro in the backfield. He stumbled forward to the 19. It's a lost yardage play, a loss of one. It'll be third and 11. Well, those are the kind of tackles that we missed all game long last week. This time, Briscoe able to come up and get enough of a hand on him and enough of his jersey to bring him down. 5.03, clock ticking, fourth quarter, 6-6 ball game. Ten seconds on the play clock for the Tigers. They're working in front of the Georgia student section, and it is loud. Locke slides the tight end from left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Going to roll out to the right. They've had success with this play. He's going to throw off his back foot, and it is incomplete on the far sideline around the 30-yard line. Trying to go to Nate Brown. We had a couple of guys in coverage over there. One of them was McGraw. I think Wilkerson was over there. Maybe Mauger. Now check a flag back in the Missouri backfield. On the running back. Penalties declined. Holding on the running back, who apparently did not have a number. Tyler Hunt, Chris Giovanni tells me, was the guilty party. Way to go, Jedi. Good eye, buddy. It's fourth down and 11. 
And it's punt time for Missouri. Let's go quickly down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's pest control. Chuck. I got to tell you real quickly, Jake Canis, he had a great series on those three plays. He was in on everything. As he has been for much of the last several weeks. Here's Fatoni's punt. Long, beautiful, hanging spiral. Godwin backpedals to the 32, breaks two tackles, now hits across field to the 40, up on the far hash to the 45, fights through a couple more stops, and all the way up to the 50. The dog's in good position here as Godwin with a fine return. Tackled by Clayton Eckerd, a tight end at the 50-yard line, a 48-yard punt, and a 17-yard return. Godwin might be earning a job at punt returner with Isaiah McKenzie on the shelf with an injury. Timeout, 4.27 to go in the fourth quarter. It's Georgia 6, Missouri 6. Dogs ball at midfield when we come back on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. Stay with us for our post-game coverage in our locker room. We'll award the Children's Health Care of Atlanta game ball with Neil Williamson. He'll take care of those honors, so stick around for that. We've still got some football to play first. 4.27 remaining in the ball game. We're tied at six. Dogs ball starting this possession at midfield. First and ten. Hand off to Sony Michelle. Runs to the right. Bounces off two men. A nice stiff arm, but the defender fights through it to bring uh, Michelle down. That was Anthony Sherrills. He got a a face full of uh, Sony Michelle's hand, but uh, was able to hang on and get Sony down at the Tiger 47 yard line. A gain of three for the sophomore running back from Plantation, Florida. Second down and seven for the Dogs in Tiger territory. And that was all Sony Michelle there. Really nowhere to go, but like you said, a great stiff arm able to get outside. Dogs moving to our right out of the eye. And off Sony. Runs into a pile. Nowhere to go there. Just right up the backside of our offensive line. A lot of red shirts fighting white shirts and moving nowhere. Just a standoff there at the 47-yard line. No gain on that carry. Now it's third down at seven. And the ball on the Tiger 47-yard line. Dogs have been very good on third down. Now eight out of 17. Tigers have had their offensive woes in this half. They've punted five times and turned out just two first downs in the second half. But yet it's a 6-6 ball game. Three receivers left for the Dogs. One to the right on third down from the Tiger 47. And snap the Lambert in the pocket. Will throw. He fires and it's caught and then dropped. No, he did. Yo, he caught it. I saw the ball come out, but Malcolm caught it and let the ball go after he did. And it's a first down for Georgia. The ball just inside the Missouri 40-yard line. A 13 and a half yard pickup for the Bulldogs' senior receiver from Valdosta. I thought he had dropped it. He put it on the ground so fast. Boy, you know who the dogs have got confidence in this coaching staff, and it is number 26. Anytime we get in a critical situation, we are targeting Malcolm Mitchell. Big first down for Georgia, 245 remaining. Lambert bobbled the snap, going to go deep, and that's going to go incomplete, and they throw a flag. Finally. (laughs) The ball landed about five or six yards out of bounds, it looked like. I'm guessing Missouri's going to argue that that was an uncatchable ball, but uh, the Mitchell, the receiver, and the defender on that side from Missouri got tangled up inside the 20-yard line. And here's the call. Pass interference, number 11 defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, the dogs, the benefit of the uh, Missouri penalty, and that is only... Well, how many penalties is that? That's only the third penalty for the Tigers tonight, but it's a costly one as it uh, inches a little bit closer to the goal line. Well, Penton and Malcolm Mitchell have been tied up all night, and there have been a couple of plays where I thought flags probably should have been thrown on, on Penton and nothing there. That one could have made an argument. It was uncatchable. Dogs keep it on the ground with Sony Michelle. They reach into the pile and untuck his jersey and just yank it back the other way, but he got to the 24-yard line. As big Terry Beckner Jr., the 300-pound freshman, got a handful of jersey on Sony and just yanked it back in the other direction. They got a yard on the play. Dogs now going to take their time and let the clock try to eat up as much clock as as they can. Already in field goal range, but 
after the last miss, want to get as close as you possibly can. Keep going. Second down, handoff, Michelle at left tackle. A little bit of a hole there into the secondary for the Tigers and down at the 16-yard line. Newsom, the linebacker, makes the stop downfield. He got eight on that run as he looked like he hopped over the line of scrimmage over a body or two there. And a timeout has been called on third down with a minute 48 to go. Missouri. There will be a 30-second timeout. Tigers use their first timeout of the half, so they'll have two remaining. Please put 153, 153 on the clock. You hear John McDade asking for uh, five more seconds to be added to the clock. It had run down to 148. It's set at 153. 6-6 6-6 contest, battle of field goals. Both teams have made two and missed one tonight. We missed our last one, deemed by the novices, the kicking novices here in this booth as a chippy <laughs> from 26 yards. Not necessarily as easy as it looks, but uh, hopefully the dogs will get another opportunity here to try to win the ball. I'd, I'd be satisfied if they just cram it into the end zone. How about you? Listen, just keep running the football, chew up that clock, that last run. Nice job by Isaiah Wynn. Brandon Cablano opened up enough of a crease for Sony Michelle to, to dart right through. But you're right. We put a touchdown on the board right now. It'd make everybody breathe a little bit easier. Third and about two. We uh, give it to Sony Michelle. He tries to roll out to the left. He's dragged down behind the line of scrimmage by Walter Brady. And that's going to bring up fourth down as Missouri will try or will, uh, use another timeout, rather. Stopping the clock with a minute 49. Boy, if we could have just got around the corner and got that first down and made things a lot more special for the Bulldogs. As it is, it's fourth down and a couple. The ball in the middle of the field between the hash marks. On the Tigers' 17-yard line, and Marshall Morgan is uh, getting ready to try to break a 6-6 tie as he huddles up with the head coach, Mark Rick, now at the 35-yard line. They're face-to-face. Let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's pest control, Chuck. Yeah, I was going to mention to you, just, uh, Mark first walked by Marshall. Just They just slapped hands. Then he turned around, came back, and like you mentioned, cupped him around the back of the helmet and got, got right in his face, and I'm sure had some very encouraging words for him. Well, let's hope it pays off here. Marshall Morgan, two for three tonight. Fatone Vada will take a knee and get ready to hold the football just inside the 25-yard line. About a 34-yard, 34-and-a-half-yard try from left to right, just inside the far hash. Kicking to our right. There's the snap and the hold. The kick is away. It is spinning end over end, and it is good! Marshall Morgan has broken the tie with a minute 44 to go, and it's Georgia 9 and Missouri 6. And that is another All-State good hands field goal by Marshall Morgan. And with that kick, Walton Gass is kicking it for charity and donating another $500 to local charities. Walton Gass, Georgia, proud. And a little redemption there for Marshall Morgan. Split the uprights on that one. And while we didn't get the first down of that last third down run that we had, the one thing that we did is we got it off the hash mark, got the football into the middle of the field which paid some dividends there for Marshall Morgan. But now up to our defense just to keep doing what they've been doing all night to that stifle this Missouri offense. For the first time tonight, Georgia leads with 104 seconds remaining. The drive was seven plays, 33 yards, took 243 off the clock. Marshall Morgan converts a 34-yard field goal. That's your Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. So all of the scoring in the ballgame, three Marshall Morgan field goals. That has been it. Two by Missouri. That's your Georgia scoring recap. Brought to you by BB&T, sharing knowledge for a brighter direction member, FDIC. But that 34-yarder just moments ago stands to give Georgia the victory if they can hang on for the final, final minute 44. Here's Gibson on the kick return that came down inside the five. He is plowed under around the 16-yard line. Chuk Samichi sweeps the legs out from under him. Chuk's the transfer from Arizona Western, playing in his fourth school. Started out at North Dakota State, went to Phoenix College, then to Arizona Western, and now at Georgia makes that tackle on special teams. The Tigers in a hole on their own 17-yard line. They have one timeout, 
in a minute 37, and they trail by three. And they're going to have to put it up now. Drew Locke, 11 out of 24, 143 yards on the night. Issues not necessarily been him throwing the football. It's having any time at all to, to throw it. Let's see if we keep coming after him the way we've done all game long. Lock in the shotgun. Four receivers in this set. They snap it. He rolls to the right. He pitches it out to Witter. Witter tries to cut up on the hash. Leonard Floyd will have none of that. He drops Witter for a loss back at the 15. A loss of two on the tackle by the junior linebacker from Eastman, Georgia, Leonard Floyd. Boy, a little surprising there. Tigers come out and just run an option. Lock goes down the line of scrimmage. Pitch that way too early. Leonard Floyd had both guys covered up. Locke drops back, throws deep, far sideline, almost picked off on the far sideline in front of the Missouri bench. Nate Brown was the intended target. Jonathan Abram, the freshman out of Columbia, Mississippi, broke it up. It's incomplete. Clock stopped with a minute 10 to go. It's third and 12. Dog sat back in a little two-man. Really close quick. And right now, we've got three true freshmen in the game in this dime package. Four receivers in for Missouri. They work out of the gun. The snap to the freshman quarterback. Long snap count. There it is now. Locke takes it. Flushed out of the pocket. Roll to the right. We second. He dumps the ball off. It's loose. Are they going to call an incomplete pass? I think they do. Now they'll see whether he was down or whether he was. It's an incomplete pass. He was trying to just shovel it out of his hands. To get it to somebody in the vicinity, it was Leonard Floyd again that came up on the big play for the Georgia defense. Trying to get the sack of Locke. Here's the call from John McDade. Number three offense. Two or four passes from inside the tackle box in an area where there's no eligible receiver. Penalty pushes the ball to spot as a pass. The loss of down. Fourth down. Did you get all that? Intentional grounding on Missouri. Ball will be spotted at the point of the foul inside the 10-yard line. It's fourth and a mile with 65 seconds to go. Last chance for Missouri. They're going to call a time to talk it over. Well, if they've got a... Uh, they're going to need a, a fourth and, uh, what, about a fourth and 18 play to uh, come up with in the uh, Missouri huddle now with a minute five to go and nine to six our score, Georgia leading. Boy, story of the game continues to be the play of our defensive line. Immediate pressure on Drew Locke. No answer does this Missouri offense have for slowing this pass rush down. So what do you think of this defensive kicking game field position battle? You, you into it? I'm into it when we're up nine. To <laughs> I see six. some hesitation there. <laughs> you want to see some? You want to see some touchdowns? I, right? I want to see nine points for us, six for them. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I hear you. Well, that's the way it stands right now. There's a minute five to go in Missouri, with one final gasp here, unless they convert on fourth and seventeen. Crowds into it. Stadium still packed. Not a lot of folks have drifted out of here. So, uh, folks, you're going to be sitting in some traffic tonight when this one's over. Sorry, Z. The limo will be on hold, okay? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Here we go. Fourth and 17 for the Tigers. They're trying to move to the left. They've got the ball on their own 10-yard line. Four receivers in. Lock in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Backpedals. He's on the two. Forced out. Rolls to the near side. We're chasing. He throws up the sideline. It is caught or not. No! Incomplete! Incomplete! He caught it out of bounds! It's George's football on the Tiger 10. Boy, and who's right there again but Jake Gaines this time in coverage. Pretty good ball thrown by Locke. He was rolling out to his left. But not quite enough. Wilkerson was in coverage all the way through the sideline. And Bellamy and Carter were in hot pursuit of the quarterback, Drew Locke, as he rolled to the left side and tried to throw up the sideline. He was trying to go to Jamon Moore. Well, he did go to Jamon Moore. He caught it, but he was just out of bounds. And he ended up almost careening into the Bulldog bench. The Dogs with the ball, 57 seconds to go. Tigers can't stop the clock. Georgia will go into the victory formation and just tick it down. The final 52 seconds will tick away as Grayson Lambert takes a knee. 9-6. to six. Georgia's going to win this ball game. And 
Oh, in the toughest of ways to win it. Well, it's not the way that you would have drawn it up before the football game, but it is going to taste sweet once this clock hits d- triple zeros up on the board. The last time Georgia played a game when both teams were below 10 points, 1977, Clemson beat the Dogs 7-6. to six. The last time Georgia won with less than 10 points, Jay Black tells me the Gator Bowl in 71 when we beat North Carolina 7-3. to three. So a low-scoring game of epic proportions, if you will. But Georgia gets the done. The final seconds tick away. The clock hits zero, and the Dogs have won it by a score of 9-6 to six over the Missouri Tigers. Three Marshall Morgan field goals and one huge goal line stand to start this ball game. Z, uh, going back to that opening moments of the game on an interception by Missouri off a tipped pass. They returned it to the one, and our defense did not let them get in. They had to kick a field goal. Who knew that that play might be, that series might be the biggest series of the entire ball game. Yeah, boy, such a good point. The game starts off. Everybody entire crowd is into it they pick it off we somehow stop them at the one yard line and and then we we hold force them into a field goal and you're right they score a touchdown there would have been the difference in this football game never would have thought it that early but what a huge stand there for the defense and what a great football game by our defense today all game long well for the first time in this series the home team wins as the two-time division champion Missouri Tigers come to Athens for the second time. And for the second consecutive year, they walk to the locker room without a touchdown. Last year, it was a 34-0 shutout. Tonight, just two field goals on the scoreboard for Missouri. Georgia had three, and that was the difference. 9-6, to our final. The Dogs a winner on homecoming in Athens on a Saturday night. Georgia now 5-2 and two overall, 3-2 and two in the SEC. The Tigers dropped to 4-3 and three for the year and 1-3 and three in Southeastern Conference play. It's a winning night in Athens. Stay tuned for our postgame show. That's coming up next on the Bulldogs Sports Network from IMG. 